Good evening. It is Friday. It is, of course, a very, very special time of the week. It is the Arsenal Women's Show, and this week we have got a really, really special show for you. We are going to be looking back on all of the emotion, all of the glory from last Sunday's Continental Cup final at Molyneux. What an amazing day it was. What an amazing game. What an amazing experience to be there. We are going to talk about that. Lots and lots of talking points throughout the game, of course, wasn't there? So, Lots and lots to get through. Of course, the Lionesses are playing tonight as well. They are kicking off the Euro qualifiers against Sweden at Wembley. Um, Lotta is in the starting lineup again. Wow, what a, what a few uh, months she's had. Brilliant. Um, I'm not sure if Steen is starting for Sweden. I haven't seen the Sweden team. Anyway, we'll, we'll look at bits of that as we go along. But the focus tonight is, of course, on last Sunday. We are going to look at a fantastic Continental Cup final. Arsenal are the champions once again. So it's all coming up. The other side of this. Of course, we couldn't celebrate the Continental Cup final without Andreas and Amar with us, could we? How could we possibly do that to you? Um, Andreas, of course, good to see you. Last time I saw you, it was outside the Jack Haywood statue, wasn't it, after the game on Sunday? Did you get home all right? What was the coach turn you like back? It must have been great, wasn't it? Yeah, it was great. Uh, yeah. The trip to Wolverhampton and the trip back yeah, was fantastic. Fantastic weekend. And uh, yeah, just to show my support to the Linuses. <laughs> Uh, they are playing tonight, so that, that there's no doubt which team I'm supporting. Uh, everybody knows now, yeah, but uh, today is uh, our special for the Conti Cup, and I think we are all happy uh, about the performance, about the result, and yeah, it was just a great day. It was, it was a great day, if you come on to it. Well, good to see you. Did you, did yeah. you make the right choice on Sunday in the end or not? What do you reckon? Oh, I don't know. It was all right. I watched an hour. Then I went and watched the Builder City game. I was falling on my phone. And then uh, some of the guys in the pub were saying, oh, one of my, one of my, someone who's close to me is troubled. And they said, that's really good. And then and I, and it was just, yeah, it was a mixture of emotions, really. I, I wasn't, both games weren't really great, but it's unfortunate I had to choose between them. But I watched the rest of the game back when I got home after going to, um, to the Temple. So that was really good as well, actually. Yeah, I mean, it, I mean, I, I thought it was a good game, actually. A, a intense game, I, I think I would call it. I cool. mean, it wasn't the most goal mouth exciting game. No, it wasn't. No. It was never probably going to be, but it was very, very intense. Um, I mean, normally I don't, I don't make notes or anything because I just wing it as I go along. But tonight, there's so many things I want to make sure that we talk about <laughs> in the final. I've got a list of things to talk about. There was so uh, many of them. I don't want to miss any of them out because that has been so, so exciting. And uh, we've got Greg with us. Aiden, good to see you. And of course, Terry's with us as well. He says, yes, evening, Richard, international man of mystery, eight o'clock hammer, everybody, and Greg, and everybody in the chat, indeed. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I want to sort of try and do things in slightly chronological order. And the first thing I really wanted to talk about was um, I think a lot of people have almost dismissed the Continental Cup. So, no, it's not that important. Um, it, obviously, out of the four trophies you can win, it's the, the bottom of the list, I guess. But for me, it's a cup competition. And you don't really, it doesn't really matter what cup it is. It, it didn't matter to me on Sunday if it was a, the Continental Cup final or the FA Cup final. It didn't matter the European Champions League final. It made no difference. It was a cup final. Arsenal were in it. We were playing against our rivals and the emotion and how much it meant was exactly the same. Now, I've seen Arsenal, both the men's team and the women's team, win some big trophies, league titles, a UEFA Women's Cup, you know, FA Cups, all kinds of big trophies, right? And none of them have meant any more to me than Sunday did. And no. I think that's that's what it's about, isn't it? It's about seeing your team win a trophy, whatever trophy it is, if it's yeah. a major trophy. And I don't think we should underestimate the competition. You know, it took us seven games we needed to win it, which is more than you can win the FA Cup. You don't need to play seven games. It's only teams from the top two tiers. The FA Cup has non-league teams, as teams from lower down the spectrum. You get easier games. So I don't think we should dismiss the Continental Cup. And I don't think, oh, well, Jonas has only won the Continental Cup. Yeah, he has only won the Continental Cup twice in a row. It's a major competition. It's tough to win. We had to come through the group stage and we did it in great style. I mean, Andreas, do you think that maybe it's underestimated as a competition because it's the, the fourth or third most important? Do you think that people maybe underestimate the importance of it? Yeah, of course. Uh, it's, it's 
Yeah, it's underestimated and, and everybody says the league title and of course the FA Cup. That's some, something really special and everybody, not only in England, but uh, in yeah, in whole Europe or in the whole world knows the FA Cup as, as the, the competition in England. But uh, the Continental Cup, as you said, uh, it's only the teams from the top two tiers and uh, this season we had to go the hard way through uh, the group stage. It's different than last season when we entered uh, in, in quarterfinals, when we were yeah, automatically uh, put through the group stage. And this year, uh, yeah, we went the hard way, Chelsea didn't. And so uh, it was really worth uh, being in the final. And for every uh, professional uh, sports, men or women, uh, a cup final is something special. And for us as, as, uh, as fans, as supporters, it was also special. Uh, I mean, <laughs> I was traveling from Germany uh, to, to London and then by coach to Wolverhampton. Uh, <laughs> you don't do this for, for, for a cup that's worth nothing. It's, it was a cup final. And uh, yeah, <laughs> I can say for me, I was excited the day before. And, and of course, on, on match day, I was very excited. I, I didn't want to lose this final. And uh, you could see from, from both teams that they went on the pitch to win. It was nobody was was there on the pitch and, and saying ah it, it's only the Conti Cup uh, yeah let let them win the Conti Cup we will win the important time no it was a cup final and everybody wanted to win it was it was a very intense match and I think it was a good match uh, that's what what happens when two top teams uh, meet uh, it's uh, it's normally not not that they uh, produce chances all over so uh, <laughs> it's it was uh, two top teams on top level, and I think so. Um, after the 60s, 70s minute, I thought now it's it's an open match. They're, they are they're trying everything, and and not only thinking on defending. So it was very open. Uh, chances created. It was really great chances created, and uh, yeah, it was a great match. And in the end, I think the better team has deserved to yeah. won the match. Oh, uh, yeah. Chelsea was. But we were the better team over uh, most most times of the match, and so uh, we deserved to win. And yeah, it was just fantastic. And two weeks ago, uh, yeah, we we played so bad, <laughs> and it was was such a big gap between these two teams. And now uh, we were eye to eye with yeah equal two equal teams with equal quality, and we had the better, and we deserved to have the better, and just fantastic. And the emotions. <laughs> were great and yeah i don't know who who saw uh, your match day vlog uh, and and heard me singing north london forever that's, <laughs> that's on the coach and yeah the emotions are just fantastic <laughs> it, it was it was and i, I say I, I, I it to me it doesn't matter which what the competition is a cup final is a cup final and to see your team win the win the cup in that way it was it was fantastic and I agree it, it was a very intense game actually right from the start it was really intense yeah. and I kind of said before and I, I wasn't expecting there to be lots of goals like there has been in the two league games I knew it was going to be tighter I knew both teams weren't going to take the risks that maybe they took in the previous games I knew it was going to be a tight game and I was just um, yeah I, I I never ever underestimated the competition at all you know it's Every season, I mean, Greg's made a great point in the chat there. He says only three domestic trophies and we've got one. Exactly. And that's the second season in a row. We've got one of those three. Mm -hmm. And you can't ask for much more than that. Let's be honest. It's greedy to think you can win two or three of them. You know, I mean, Chelsea might still do, but it's kind of greedy to expect that, isn't it? To, to get one out of the three every season is a good season and it's, and it's a great effort. And for us to have won that cup, I, I think, especially if we beat in the final, you know, it's not like we played... Um, one of the lesser teams. We we played the, the, the league champions. You know, we played the, the top team in the in the country, one of the top teams in Europe, and we beat them in extra time. So, yeah, I don't think we should ever ever underestimate any competition, and any any victory in a competition is is worthwhile. And by the way, Stina is starting for Sweden, which is great. Yes, I saw that. I saw um, that. Yeah, I saw that. Just seen him in the lineup, which is good. Yeah. Um, I mean, Amar, do, do you think that it is maybe underestimated as a competition because because of the, maybe the group stage at the beginning, people think maybe it's not a serious knockout competition straight away. But it is the top two divisions only in it. It's a it's a tough. If you've got to play the group stage, it makes it tough, doesn't it, to go all the way as we did. 
in many ways, as I've said to you before, and I swear, okay, maybe I shouldn't have disregarded as much as, a, as a, in the past, but it's a bit like the Carabao Cup with the men, isn't it? It's, okay, there's no group stage involved in that, but that gives the, okay, it's not it's not right maybe to call them the, the lesser, smaller teams, but it gives a chance from those in the lower leagues, a chance to mix it with the big teams. And uh, as you see in the women's, in the with regards to the women's game, they have to, it's good to that the that the teams lower down get the opportunity to play in the group stage. So it's still a trophy, and in, in a way, those the teams that to ease that fixture congestion in in the many ways, it, it's they're designed to help reward those the teams that do really well to in a in a way to sort of ease that fixture congestion and make sure they don't have to play as many games. Uh, so yeah, I mean, it should just be treated as any other cup probably should you win it. It's like well, they used to have the old county cup or whatever it was the trophy that Arsenal ladies used to win a lot under the Cakers. A trophy is a trophy, then, but no matter what you win, it's still something to, as you said, okay, it's not been a great season for us, but it's something that you can still go for. And it shouldn't be disregarded alongside the other competitions, as I said, but it's not too dissimilar to the Carabao Cup. But yeah, it gives those lesser teams a chance to shine and mix it with the with the big guns on the on a, on a good on the, maybe not the grandest of stages like the Champions League, but it certainly gives them a chance to push pit their wits against the best and. And it ultimately is a trophy to play for and shouldn't be disregarded, therefore. Absolutely not, no. Any any trophy is hard to win and to win anything is great. And I say, for, for an Arsenal perspective, I think it's important that Arsenal do win trophies. I think we have to win trophies on a regular basis because that's what we've done in our history, you know, the men and the women. And we, we can't turn around and say, well, no, um, it, it's good enough just to be there or thereabouts. No, it's not for Arsenal. It's only good enough winning something, winning trophies. And we've done it again. And... You know it, how much it meant to everybody that was there, uh, the yeah. players, the fans, yeah. everybody. You could see how important that was, and it was great to, to be a part of it all. And yeah, I'm never going to ever dismiss no. the Continental Cup ever again. I just think it's no. it's, a, it's a worthy competition, and and we've won it with, with the record record winners of that, the record wins of the FA Cup, the record wins of everything. Let's be honest, and we're never going to get caught, are we? <laughs> no. We just keep increasing it. We just keep increasing it every every single uh, every single. Uh, season. Greg says it should have been played at Wembley, and uh, we could have had sixty thousand uh, supporters. Yeah, 000. yeah, it could have been, but I kind of like the fact that it's played at different grounds. I, I do kind of like that. I think England games, you know, the Lionesses games get played around different stadiums. I like that, and I think this Cup final, um, it's good that it is played in different stadiums. I mean, yes, it, if it had been played at somewhere like Old Trafford, could have got a, a bigger crowd in, but it was quite nice. It was quite. Um, a, a, a smaller crowd, it made it more of an intimate atmosphere, I felt. And obviously, Arsenal fans were everywhere. You know, we had Chelsea had a few fans behind the goal at the other end, and we pretty much had the rest of the ground. All the neutral <laughs> stands, in Arsenal. it was red and white everywhere. It was amazing, actually. And that wouldn't have maybe happened at a bigger ground. You know, maybe Chelsea, if it had been in Wembley, for example, Chelsea would have probably had more fans there. Whereas at Wolverhampton, they're not going to travel to Wolverhampton. They barely travel to London to watch Chelsea. They're not going to travel 300 miles. So um, playing it in London would have been maybe more an advantage to Chelsea. So I was pleased they didn't play at Wembley, actually. I was I was happy with where they played it. And I thought Wolves overall did a really good job of hosting the event. I thought that they did a really good job. Apart from, I have to say, the stadium announcer read out the team names, the players' names, got them all wrong. It's like, come on, mate. Obviously, these are players that are working Put them all wrong. He called Lotta Wooven Moy Lottie. I mean, come on, mate. She played for England. What's the matter with you? <laughs> I was impressed for him. And it was someone put a comment on the blog because I mentioned it. And someone said about it, it was disrespectful. And it's right, it was disrespectful. It disrespectful if you yeah. can't learn 22 players' names, how to say them. I mean, he got Steena Black Stenius's name. He made a right meal of that about four times until he finally got it right after she scored at the end. I mean, it was honestly, it was. It was mental. He got most of the Chelsea players right, funnily enough. And some of them had more complicated names. And the yeah, Arsenal players definitely <laughs> have got more easier names to say. He messed them all up. Even the, I say even Lotto Uber Moy called a Lotto. Come on. I mean, ridiculous. How did, I, how I, did he say written corner in? How did, how did he say written corner in? Yeah, then well, yes, he said all, yeah. the Chelsea players he pretty much got right. It was the Arsenal players he struggled with. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> what are you doing? How can it, you get such simple things wrong? It was ridiculous. And that's the only kind of thing. I thought the rest of it, the organisation was brilliant, but it was just that. I was, it just annoyed me so much. I'm thinking, you've got one job, mate, to read out the team. That's all you've got to do. And announce the goals when they go in. That's it. You haven't got to do anything else. Just research yourself a little bit. These players, everybody should know them because they're household names in, in the women's game now. You know, and to, to make such a meal of all of their names was absolutely ridiculous. But apart from that... 
I thought. I mean, we went to Molyneux the day before because we were there and I, tried, yeah. I was doing a bit of filming and stuff like that. And um, the security team that were working at the cup final were there, obviously, the day before. And some guy came out of the main office. He said to us, you can't take uh, you can't take photos outside the ground. I said, why not? He said, well, no, you're not allowed. I said, well, tomorrow is going to be 20,000 people here. They're all going to take photos outside the ground. Oh, exactly. yeah, but you can't take photos outside the ground. I said, oh, right, okay, fair enough. So we went around the other side and took it around there. Then when we was going in the ground in, on the day, I had my camera, obviously, because I was doing the vlog. The guy that, you know, they search you outside, he said to me, you can't take photos and videos inside the ground. I said, all right, mate, no problem. Obviously, I wasn't going to listen to him. And as soon as you get in the ground, there's a there's a board up on the side. It says selfie station to take your pictures. <laughs> you can't take pictures inside the ground. I'm like, what on earth are you on about? You've got selfie a selfie station. station there to take photos to promote on social media that you've been uh, mulling you. And you're outside, you're saying you can't take photos and that in the ground. Of course you can. Don't be silly. Don't stop talking nonsense, mate. Um, but anyway, it wasn't going to stop us from doing what we were doing. But it was it was quite it amused me actually that he made a big point of saying you can't take photos and videos. And there's a selfie station literally as soon as you go through the turnstile on the side. <laughs> I'm like, right, okay, fair enough. Anyway, um, but yeah, it, it was it was a great uh, it was well hosted. What was it like in the Steve Ball stand, Andreas? Was it was it pretty well organised? Was the atmosphere good in there? Yeah, atmosphere was good and it was all all red in even in the red. Yeah, it was. Yeah, oh, I agree. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it was. I felt it was eighty percent Arsenal supporters and uh, maybe ten percent Chelsea and ten percent Wolves. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I read from from uh, a Chelsea supporter after the match. Uh, um, he wrote, uh, "It's uh, yeah, we lost uh, and that's disgusting, but." Uh, the, the more disappointing is that Arsenal beat us uh, six to one uh, in in uh, attendance. Yeah, and that's that's six the fact. to one. Was it six yeah. to one? <laughs> what is that? Easily, it Four was one. easily six to one. I, I would I would say that's that's a bit that's a bit conservative on Chelsea's part. I think it was it was all Arsenal, literally everywhere. Yeah. Everywhere was Arsenal. I, before the game, we walked to the ground. I saw two Chelsea fans. I think walking to the ground outside by the fan zone. There was a few. But not many, and then in the ground, apart from the, the end behind the goal at the other end, where that was a Chelsea end, and even that wasn't full. Everywhere else in the ground, it, three quarters of the ground was Arsenal fans, and yeah. it was pretty much full. There was there was hardly any Chelsea fans there. It was it, I thought it was hilarious actually that they you know they're a team that's won all these trophies. They're chasing a quadruple. They're in a cup final, and they've got like two thousand fans in the stadium. It was it was it was embarrassing for them actually, and I thought it was hilarious. And it was Arsenal literally everywhere. It was brilliant to see. You know what what support we've got as a, as a club it's amazing isn't it yeah. it really is great and um yeah we did it again um on sunday yeah but it was it was great the atmosphere was was brilliant i thought right from the before the game outside inside everything was was fantastic wasn't it um now of course the game itself the, the team lineup what 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 did we make of that start in 11 because i was it wasn't far off what we'd said, actually, was it, in the preview, Andreas? The teams that we predicted wasn't much different, really. And I was quite surprised, in a sense, we didn't know until afterwards that Alessia Russo hadn't been well for a couple of days, and that's yeah. why she didn't start. I was just yeah. interested, if she had been 100% fit, do you think she would have started, and maybe Steena wouldn't have been there to score the goal, or, or do you think he would have took Steena off at nil-nil and brought Alessia on earlier? I mean, Andreas, do you think that could have happened if she was fit? Because... Or was this the team he was always going to start anyway? Yeah, I was surprised uh, also not knowing about uh, the illness from from Alessia. So uh, I think this was the reason that uh, Stina started. And uh, the other surprise was uh, Chloe starting uh, over over Caitlin. Yeah. This was was a good decision too. Chloe was very very effective in uh, at least in the first half. Also, uh, as long as she was playing, and then when Caitlin came in she had an impact on the match so this were all, yeah this were all right decisions and and when he brought uh Leslie on uh it was fortunately he let uh, Stina on uh, I thought uh, now he will sub uh, Stina off now and maybe maybe Jonas saw that they worked together very good and yeah mm -hmm. of course Stina scored the late the late winner this also shows that uh, you can't you can't put her on the bench. She's our best goal scorer, and and they work yeah. together. Yeah, so it was a bit surprising in the lineup, but everything worked out <laughs> to whatever reason. But uh, in the end, when you win a final, then the manager has done everything uh, all right. So <laughs> we we can't criticize him. It, it was was everything was all right, and we won. So uh, yeah, yeah, happy with that. 
Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and I think you're right because I think Jonas has taken a lot of criticism this season, hasn't he, for his lineup, <laughs> his tactics, and a few other bits and pieces as well. And, and I think you know, probably rightly so at times. I don't think that sometimes we haven't been able to defend him as much as I, I like Jonas. But um, you have to say on Sunday he got everything spot on, didn't he? That, that he made the, the the good sub. I agree with that because Le- um, Chloe Lacasse was absolutely brilliant, wasn't she? In that. For the first 60 minutes or whatever it was, she was brilliant. I thought she caused Chelsea so many problems. And then she went off and um, uh, Caitlin came on, or Caitlin, as the guy called her when she came on. But Caitlin, Caitlin came her on Caitlin. and oh, she was God. absolutely brilliant, wasn't she? She absolutely rang them ragged down that left-hand side. Obviously created the goal, created one or two other opportunities as well. And she was brilliant as well. So, yeah, I think Jonas has to get a lot of credit for the way he managed that game all the way through. Brilliant from Jonas. And he shows what he's capable of doing. He shows what he can do. When yeah. he gets it right, it works. It's brilliant. I mean, Emma, was you surprised by the team? Line? Obviously, we didn't know about Lessie being ill necessarily no. until afterwards. But was you quite surprised with that he started, Steen? I mean, she has played a lot of games in this competition. She's played all of them, actually. So, maybe it's his Continental Cup team. I don't know. But do you think that maybe Steena wouldn't have played the full game if Lessie had been able to play more? Do you think he would have took her off in the second half at nil-nil? Mm. Yeah, it's an interesting one. Where you took Steena off in the recent league game, or Lessie on, and then he was being effective, wasn't it? Yeah, but it was a complete contrast to that performance. I mean, like when you look, because I like, was like watching a different team when you think two weeks on was like, he got his, absolutely, as you say, he got his spot on. You know, he's got his first choice back for now. It's going to be difficult for Laura to come back in when Emily is playing the way she did. Yeah, it was absolutely, absolutely fantastic. The way she, her and Lotta women more together. It's almost like, like they know each other's games inside out. Inside out. I thought the whole defence was absolutely brilliant. And now going yeah, to that also, yeah. also when Kadina came on, she had probably her best came in the Arsenal show as well. And the stats only said yes. Limit them to just yeah, three yeah. shots on target in a whole 120 minutes when they had probably about 10 times that during the game at Stamford Bridge. That was that was really good to see. And, you know, we had the better, the better chances. But going back to your point on Lessie, if she had been there, I don't know. I don't know if she had would have played. I would, everyone says that we would love to see them together. But it, uh, if when they're fit and fully firing, I think they can make for a really good partnership. But it's good to have the option off the bench, and they still they, they still look pretty good when they did come on together. But um, mm. yeah, no, I think you did get the tactics spot on. Manu would w- did really well. Let's just have a look. Yeah, and uh, yes. uh, when Lacasse came off to who else came off here? Kyra. Came, uh, yeah, he used the the Australians pretty well as well. So I'm just looking back at the lineup now. Yeah, they were, he, he he got the best out of them, didn't he? You could see. Um, yeah, absolutely. Right, I'm just losing my train of thought a bit, but no, would uh, um, yeah, I don't know whether she would have played actually been fit, but um, when if um, sorry, what was I gonna say? Yeah, we only found out after the game, didn't we? We only found out after the game that she had been unwell, yeah, and even then yeah. she looked good when she came on, so yeah, I think he got his spot on, and yeah, he, he really stifled Charles, he limited them to only the really. Not only really attempt you can say they came close to scoring was that Lauren James effort in the second half. So I thought he did really well and he got the he got it tactically and compared to the game at Sanford Ridge, he got it tactically spot on. Yeah, and I mean you know, when when you get one game so badly wrong as he did that one, you learn from that and next time you put it right and he did. Hey, there's just been an injury to Leslie Russo actually in the England game. Oh, no. uh, a bit of a late tackle on her. She, there was blood on her ankle. She's just getting sort of sorted yeah, out now on the five, which is a bit of a worry. I think she's gonna be okay to carry on, but it was a bit of a late challenge on her, actually. Um, and a um, lot of women might had a great tackle very early in the game, actually, as well, on Steena, funnily enough, in the penalty yeah. and stopped Sweden scoring. So, you know, uh, she's had a great start to the game. And I say, unless he's got this injury, she's still off the pitch at the minute, but hopefully she'll be OK. It looked like she just got a... I think there was blood on her ankle from, like, the challenge just before. But um, anyway, I'm sure she's going to be OK. Let's hope so. Uh, Terry says, I'm not one to say I told you so, but how crap again was LJ Havertz? Uh, well done, Lang. Well, she's not. Yeah, don't, don't I mean, she, she wasn't really quiet. Wasn't she? Really. she didn't have any impact at all, um, LJ, but which is quite good, obviously. Um, Terry says, to be fair, I did feel sorry for the 52 salty fans <laughs> traveling with that one. Yeah, there wasn't about 52, 52 of them as well. Yeah. 52. There might have been 60, maybe. I didn't count them all, but it wasn't many. 52. Um, Anna Hannah says, uh, Kadena smashed LJ again. She certainly did. Yeah, she's definitely yeah, got a better yeah. over there, but no doubt about it. Um, Greg says there, uh, Palova got player of the match. I thought Fox was the best player on the pitch. I mean, Ooh, the good thing was, one. the good thing was, there were so many Arsenal players that could have got player of the match in that game. I mean, I, I picked out Vicky very, very early on in the second half of that game. She was 
outstanding. She absolutely bossed that midfield. She was kicking um, Erin Cuppa all over the place. And she just won the ball every single time. We gave the ball away. She won it back every single time. She was brilliant, Vicky Pullover. And I, I can't, I don't feel bad that she got bad of the match. She deserved it because she was excellent. But you're right. Emily Fox was fantastic. Lotta was absolutely yeah. amazing again. Yeah, they were. Uh, what a performance from Lotta. You have to say that was incredible yeah. from her. Brilliant yeah. from start to finish. Uh, she absolutely pocketed that. Um, uh, that one who scored the goal that was disallowed. I can't remember her name now. Ramirez is it? My, my Ramirez, yeah. My Ramirez. Yeah, she absolutely pocketed her all game. Just absolutely brilliant. And, yeah, there were several outstanding performances from Arsenal. But we, guess what you need to do? When you're going to beat a team like Chelsea in a cup final, you've got to, everyone's got to step up. And they did. Every single player stepped up in that game. And they were all brilliant. Manu Zinsberger, what a save she made at the end from uh, yeah, yeah, from, uh, from LJ to, to keep it a nil-nil. So, every single player played a part, a, a big part in that game as well. And, um, yeah, Emily Fox was fantastic. Yes, she was, absolutely. But I don't think we can... We can't say that Vicky didn't deserve playing a match. Andreas, do you agree? Do you think she... I mean, Vicky was absolutely amazing, wasn't she? What a performance from her. She was everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Vicky was great and Emily Fox was fantastic. Uh, if I had to decide, for me, it was Lotta because, uh, yeah, was uh, I, was, I was really concerned seeing uh, a player like Myra Ramirez with, with her physicality. And, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I saw uh, you know, a few WSL matches when... Uh, when Ramirez was uh, starting for Chelsea with her physicality, she's very, very difficult to defend. And uh, except this, this goal she scored after the handball from Frankfurt, uh, except this situation, uh, I think uh, Lotta pocketed her uh, over the whole the whole time Ramirez was on the pitch. It was a fantastic match from Lotta uh, in, in defense, her, her opening long passes. Yeah, it was, yeah, she was absolutely great and for me she was the player of the match but um, yeah also Emily or Vicky were great and and uh, I have to say uh, I was concerned at halftime when I heard uh, Kudia had to be substituted uh, mm -hmm. and uh, Kudina came on oh, yeah. she, had, she had a few difficult matches um, when, when, when she came yeah. last summer but uh, in the last weeks she was go, uh, going better and better and uh, I think the, on, on Sunday was Laya's best match for the Arsenal so far. Yeah, uh, she was, yeah, oh, she fitted in she defense uh, perfectly. It was no difference to, to Leah Williamson, yeah. Leia Kudia. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely great. And her understanding, her partnership with Lotta was just perfect. And uh, another point where I have to say Jonas did everything right. If there was a small, a small issue or problem for, for Leah to take her out was... The best decision, and yeah. uh, when you bring in uh, a player like Laya, who fits in from from the first moment uh, and plays so good, then everything everything right. And for for her self confidence, Laya Kudina's self confidence, it, it it was fantastic to have such an uh, such a good performance in such an important match. I think uh, mm -hmm. she will this will bring her two three steps forward uh, in her time for Arsenal. Yeah, you could choose yeah. a lot of players. As player of the match, of course, Dina with with scoring the goal. Uh, but uh, yeah, for me it was Lotta, and uh, I'm I'm really happy for her that that she's uh, starting for the Lionesses today. I hope she she's doing as good as she does for us. Yeah. She has been so far. She's played really well so far, actually, for for England tonight as well. What I've seen, but but no, I mean, Leia Cadena was was brilliant. I have to say, at half time, I was a bit worried when we saw the substitution and thought not because I don't, I don't trust Leia Cadena because she's a great player, but when you're coming into a cup final, it's nil-nil. You've got to come on at the back. Straight away, you've got to get into the pace of the game when you've been mm. on the bench. And you can't afford to come on and make two or three little early mistakes because it's going to cost you. You have to be switched on straight away. And that, that was what really impressed me, the way that she stepped straight in as though she'd started the game. And that was really, really impressive. And her performance was great. And, you know, Paula said during the second half, she said, oh, um, Leia Cadena is the uh, Spanish Leah Williamson. And that's kind of a nice way to describe her, actually, wasn't it? The way she played, she was so calm. She read the game well. She was cutting things out. She was just brilliant. And, you know, um, yeah, she's a great player and a great addition. And, you know, you can't have too many great defenders in your team, especially the number of goals we've conceded this season. But suddenly now, Emily Fox has come in, Leia Cadena has come in, and suddenly, you know, we're looking as though we going forward, we could have a really, really strong defence. You know, we need a new goalkeeper, obviously, but we think we're going to solve that problem in the summer. Um, but yeah, lots and lots of really positive things defensively 
And yes, I, I agree. Lotta was brilliant as well. She she was fantastic. That was probably one of her best ever games as well, actually. You know, saying Leica Dana's best game, it was probably Lotta's best game as well. Um, she was outstanding. I mean, Amo, would you have picked for Player of the Match then? Because there were so many, sure. so many um, good, good choices, really, wasn't there? You could you could have put an argument in pretty much anyone who played. <laughs> Pretty much all of them. Could have, yeah, yeah, it was difficult. I would have probably given it to one of the defenders, but Vicky's tendency, the one block, I think, can't remember what she denied in the, was it the second half? Or, yeah, she denied, she uh, the really, I uh, can't remember who she denied now, but it was a really good block, defensive block, the way she bombed bomb forward, set up that chance for Lacasse, which she should really have buried. She was really everywhere um, and was, yeah, just so fast becoming a great player for us now. Yeah, she's just, uh, her link up, she, I think I was less and for, for the friendship you create with him, you know, the game as well. He's only going to be great, even better. What signing she's proven to be. It could have been anybody, but I agree. I think Fog, Emily Fogg was great. He even bombed forward as well. He created the odd chance. Lotto was fantastic. Yeah, as I said, they only limited them to only three shots in the game. So it could have been everyone, anyone really. But I think probably just Vicky was the right player to get it in the end. And uh, yeah, um, as I said, yeah. Um, you know, I, it, was, it could have been anybody on the pitch, and it and uh, they would have they would have deserved it. So yeah, I mean, I think as I said, the right decision was made by the pundits in the end. But he could have given any any he could have, could have given it to any of them. It was far better than what we saw at Stamford Bridge, and yeah, and uh, so that's a that's a blueprint going forward. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, uh, that everybody everybody steps up, but I mean, I. I'd, I'd said during the second half that Vicky Paloma was was having an amazing game. She she absolutely dominated that midfield. It was it was Erin Cuthbert that she barged off the ball and then set that chance up for Chloe Lacasse in the second uh, half, uh, and that just summed up her game. Literally every time Erin Cuthbert got the ball, she just pushed her out of the way. It's like, well, we see her, and you know, Erin <laughs> Cuthbert's a tough little player, isn't she? It's not like she easily gets pushed off the ball. She must have got pushed off the ball by Vicky five or six, five, seven times in that game. Incredible! I've never seen that happen before. Um, so for me, I thought it was the right choice. I was, I would have been surprised if Vicky didn't get it. But having watched the game back, there were so many great performances that it, you know anyone could have got it, and I wouldn't have minded too much. I mean, Lotta, yeah, brilliant. Leia Cadena, brilliant. Emily Bock, brilliant. You know, um, and I did want to talk about obviously Steena. You can't ignore the impact that Steena's made this season. Um, you know, yeah. she's. I think she started 14 games in all competitions. She scored 16 goals. Yes, a lot of the goals have come when she's come off the bench and scored, but that is an incredible goal scoring record. And the fact that, you know, she yeah. got the, this opportunity in a cup final, you know, she's a big game player, isn't she? Last season, she scored in a cup final, scored the winner in the semi final, scored both legs of the Champions League semi final, scored the winner in the Champions League quarter final. This season, a hat trick in the continental semi final, the winner in the final. You know, she's a big, big game player, Stina. And she really stepped up. Yes, yeah, OK, you could say there were certain aspects of her game. Sometimes her first touch wasn't great. Um, but I thought, overall, she was a threat the whole game. Every time we got the ball forward, her run into space, she was always there. Yeah. And yeah, she missed that chance just before an extra time, didn't she, when Leslie flicked the ball over to her and she fired it over the bar. I thought that was going to be the moment. But the thing yeah. with Stina is, even when she misses a chance or she misses a chance again, She's always going to come back. She's in the right place again. And the one that she scored, that was actually a really difficult chance. Again, it was Erin Cuthbert. She pushed her out of the way. Pushed Erin Cuthbert out of yeah. the way. I'm having this not stopping me. And that was fantastic. And, you know, she put it right in the corner. Uh, you know, Hannah Hampton got hands to it. Couldn't keep it out. And it was literally, we were right behind that goal. And it was right in front of us. And to see that go in, right. was just, it was just incredible. But once again, right, Stephen yeah. had a job. I mean... And what did you make of Stina's performance? Because I, I, I think she would have probably got taken off if, if Leslie had been maybe fitter. Because I'm not saying she was playing badly, but she maybe wasn't having the, the massive impact in the game. But she never does, because unless we've got the ball in the penalty area, you don't often see much of her, do you? But she's alive all the time. Her running off the ball was brilliant, wasn't it? Yeah, she, she's, as we, we said in the last week, she's totally different uh, striker than... Uh, Leslie is. Uh, Stina is a number nine, and she's always a threat in the box. And with her runs uh, for, for the opposition team, they must always have an eye on her. And uh, and they must look, where, where is where is uh, Black Stanis? Is she making a run again? So she's always a threat. And and when she gets the ball in the box, there's always uh, the chance that she, that she scores. Of course, two minutes before she scored, she, she had the better chance. And 
And yeah, this, yeah, I remember yeah. when 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 she didn't didn't make it in this situation. I was sitting on on the stand and said, "Oh, Stina, how could you miss this?" <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think that that you would get another chance and and make yeah. it. Uh, but that's that's her game. She's always a danger in in the box. She's scoring a lot of goals this season, and I think uh, you can see uh, compared to last season when in January February she was. Uh, she missed a lot of chances and uh, she was out of, of any self-confidence. And now she has this self-confidence, even if she misses a big chance, she, she yeah. believes in herself. She knows, okay, the next one I, I will um, score. And this, yeah, yeah, this, this is a fact uh, in this season. And um, yeah, she's a number nine. She's, she's in the box and her runs are, are always uh, dangerous for the opposition side. So it's great to have two different sorts of strikers and uh, yeah, once again, they fit together very good. And um, yeah, I don't yeah. know what she would have been substituted if Lessie would have been fit uh, throughout the week. Uh, but fortunately, uh, the situation was yeah. Duna thought, oh, I, I let her, I let Stina on. Yeah, fortunately, because uh, yeah, it was was great done. And uh, as you said, uh, yeah, the, the player uh, who was defending this situation was Aaron Cuthbert. And I rate Erin Cuthbert really high. She's, she's normally mm -hmm. one of the best Chelsea players. And uh, yeah, it was brilliant done from, from Stina. And yeah, fantastic goal. It yeah. was. And it's, it's a, I, I think that's the type of goal that Leslie Russo doesn't score. I don't think Leslie Russo would have scored that chance. And I think it just goes mm -hmm. to show, doesn't it? You know, Jonas needs to, needs to understand that sometimes Stina's not going to always be involved in the game. She's mm. not. That you know, she, she reminds me quite a little bit of she's like the Arsenal women's version of Aubameyang when he played for Arsenal. You know, not always involved in the game, but inside the penalty area, the chance is there, dangerous and, and gonna score goals. And um I think Jonas needs to give her much more time on the pitch in the future because she shows how important she is. And I agree, you know, she missed that chance before and I was the same, I'm thinking that that was the chance, you know, about ten minutes left in extra time, you know, she's gone through one on one and um, yes, the ball bounced up a little bit. It wasn't. It didn't quite fall for a right, and she's in it, and, and it's gone up over the bar. And you know that was a, a big miss. It looked like a big miss, but then to put that one away, just incredible, really, just absolutely incredible. And to, right, I mean, you know, I, I love Steena, and you know the fact that it was right in front of where we were as well. It was almost like I felt she scored it for me. That's what she did. She scored that goal for me. That was um, I mean, I mean, Emma, what did you make of Steena though? Because obviously, you know, she's not played anywhere near as many minutes this season as she did last season. As maybe she should be. But how effective is she when she's on the pitch? It's incredible, really, um, isn't it? What, I mean, what they have at disposal, you know, she was said she was tied by them, but she's always in there giving it her all, you know, her positioning is fantastic. And yeah, how many, I just, I just how many important goals has she scored for us in, since know, she signed? Exactly. It's just incredible. Exactly. Yeah, I go back to the first time I saw her debut, I was there when. We played Manchester United a couple of seasons ago and she came off the bell and Viv played that absolute worldy ball to her and she finished it off. Yeah, Ever since yeah. then, she's like Champions League sem quarterfinal last season, Champions League semi-final, Conti Cup semi-final, Conti Cup final this year, Conti hat-trick in the semi-final, final. She was a fantastic player to have at her disposal. You know, to, yeah. It would have easy, been easy for her after missing that chance. Of, oh, no, you played, oh, I just slide rule it and Hampton's not going to get it. Ah, But she could have gone, she could have turned her hair out and but. He just knew, just all she had to do a slide with it, but it could easily uh, let it affect her. But you know, no, she could next chance. Um, wonderful work from the Aussies down the left hand side. That was a wonderful build up. And then once the broke, ball broke to her, you knew somehow she was going to finish. Yeah, Hanny, yeah, people say Hanny Hampton was to do better or could have done better. But she, the way the way she finished off, cool and calm, there was only ever going to be one outcome. And to send the Arsenal fans by the little delirious as well, it must have been fantastic for you guys. Watch, I can't imagine the feeling what it was like. I tell you, when I was watching the game between. The Man City and Arsenal, and I know four minutes ago, I thought I got a notification on my phone. Oh no, I thought I actually thought Chelsea had scored. No, no joke, I actually thought Chelsea had scored. I thought, and it's a black says, Oh, yes, and then the re re release of emotion was just unbelievable. <laughs> and in the pub, when I was watching, and yeah, one of the guys who was there watching the Man City game with me he said, Is one of his friends or something had actually gone to watch the games, which was really good to know. And dad was saying, Oh, he's a really passionate follower of women's football, so it was really good. And uh, yeah, no, what a player to have, I think. I think, I think she should change. We should change the name, not 
you know, she doesn't feel called Black Stennis anymore, but maybe she called her Gold Stennis because of all the golden goals she scored for us. Or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she called yeah, oh, her, her Gold Stennis now from now on or something like that. But anyway, no, she's a so, fantastic talking, player. And, uh, talking of well, Arsenal strikers, Leslie Russo's just scored for England, by the way, and it was LJ that set her up with a cross. So um, that, that, will, that will keep Terry quiet for a bit, won't it? It was LJ's cross from the right hand side, yeah, she, and Leslie. Let's see, she to, came she in with five in header from close range, one nil to England, which is great. Obviously, Euro qualifier this is so yeah. yeah she has to be... Yeah, sorry, go on. Sorry. No, that's a good assist from LJ as well. A lovely little cross into yeah, the yeah. box as well. Yeah. I know we, we don't yeah, like it. Be... Well. She had to be strapped up because there was a lot of blood, but yeah, no, that's good to see. And uh yeah, some interesting other score lines. I don't know if Andreas is injured, but it's currently Austria two, Germany one. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> Clever sorry, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Wow. Clever sorry. Sorry. Oh, yeah. Right. yeah. I know, it's still, you know, early, still early, man. Still early, man. Yeah, no, I can't imagine. Months, I was yeah. going, going back to that point, I can't imagine what the feeling must have been when you saw that. And Arsenal. There was no way back for Chelsea after that. We thoroughly deserved to win that game in the end. And uh, I'm so happy for it. And you could see, okay, we'll maybe come on to the point later in the show. But, you know, there was, there was only one person that goal was for. Absolutely, yeah, and you, you could see how much it meant to everybody, and, and I think that was part of it as well. Terry says, obviously, Russo won nil. Greg Russo's just scored great header. It was a great header. Uh, Jimmy says, uh, nice. It was it was a good cross. Yeah, Jimmy also said there, Chelsea looked tired, and Arsenal was always first. And well, yeah, maybe Chelsea did look tired, but I, I don't care to be honest. They can be as tired yeah. as they like. We we beat them in <laughs> fair and square, and that's it. Uh, there you go. Terry says, Havertz miss it across. Russo made it look good. <laughs> well, Russo made it look good, but it was a good cross. It's not Chris Tyson Havertz, man. It's not Chris It was a good cross. I still don't like her. I don't like, I don't like LJ. I don't like her demeanour. I don't like her attitude, but that was a decent yeah. cross and England have scored and that's all that matters. Um, and of course, Le Leslie scored as well, which is great. So, um, but yeah. No, but going back obviously to the important issue, which was of course last Sunday's cup final. Um, yeah, it, it was, it was a great moment when the goal went in. It was almost like I mean I've seen obviously we were stat we were behind that goal that's where our tickets were yeah. so we couldn't really see what that end looked like because we were there but looking I've seen obviously videos I've seen photos and it was just red and white wasn't it that whole stand <laughs> behind the goal just looked completely red and white and it must have been amazing yeah. for the players attacking that goal and it was almost like it looked like maybe the fans had sucked that ball into the net you know we were just so desperate <laughs> for it to and that's probably what happened yeah. a little bit maybe but now it was incredible when the goal went in everyone was going mental it was it was absolutely brilliant and it was one of the best like goal celebrations i can remember ever and that's you know from years of watching the men's team as well win all them trophies it was such a great moment um and yeah it was it was fantastic of course um you know we, we briefly touched on it then we can't um, we can't not discuss it, of course. The the massive, massive shock of what happened to yeah. Breda. I mean, uh, it it was cool. literally one of the cool. one of the worst things I've ever seen in my life, honestly. To see no, one of your players go down like that. And I actually saw it happen as well. I know it, it wasn't on the ball, but I'd noticed just before. Uh, I think she'd made a run forward and we'd lost the ball and the Chelsea had cleared the ball away and she'd kind of stood still. And Breda doesn't generally stand still, does she? We lose the ball and she'll be running back. And she stood still and I'm thinking, why is she standing still? And then, of course, seconds later, she just fell down, collapsed. And it was like, wow. It was it was un unbelievable, honestly. I mean, I've never, ever seen anything like that happen before. And, and when you, I mean, it'd be, it'd be bad enough no matter who it was. But the fact it's it's you know one of our players that yeah. you just suddenly saw and it was it was just shock literally I, I've never I've never known anything like it before it was horrible it was horrible to see it was um, you know obviously straight away you knew it was bad and you know the medical teams got on as quick as I thought maybe they were a little bit slow reacting maybe to to get the stretcher on and whatever and get the defibrillator on and stuff like that it seemed to take longer than it maybe should have done I don't know it felt like that at the time but. Um, yeah, it was absolutely shocking, wasn't it? I mean, I know Andreas, you you didn't realize what had happened, did you, at the time? No, I, I was not looking at her because it was uh, it happened uh, not not with the ball. It was yeah, yeah, yeah it ball, was yeah. Uh, right. was away from the ball, and uh, I only saw uh, one of our players suddenly lying there, and and uh, I think Katie was running to her, and then uh, two medicals uh, came on the pitch, and the first. Uh, they made uh, immediately the sign for changing. And I thought it's it must be a serious injury, 
and uh, we, we were discussing uh, who who is it and someone said it's it's confirmed it's Frida but uh, nobody yeah we were too far away uh, from, yeah. from the place uh, to where it happened nobody saw that it was was a collapse and uh, yeah I thought it's it's a serious injury uh, I remember the the situation in in Champions League when and Laura Winrater was injured. It, it looked similar to me. Uh, yeah. This long time of uh, of treatment on the pitch, I thought, oh, not another ACL. But uh, yeah, you told me after the match that she collapsed. And fortunately, I didn't saw it in that moment because it must have been uh, threatening to see this. Or yeah, yeah. Hard, so hard, yeah. Hard. yeah, let's yeah, just really let's just be happy that that uh, yeah the. the the examination and tests uh, said that it's no cardiac issue or no, maybe, no, really. maybe uh, it's nothing serious. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, yeah, you don't know. And uh, I think all the players were shocked. I read after the match that yeah. um, uh, before the extra time started, uh, Jonas could tell the, the girls that uh, Frida is awake again. Yeah, she, she really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, he said she's awake again. And let's let's just do what we can influence. We can't help her right now. We can only influence our match and and uh, get the win for her. And uh, Guru Raiden, yeah. uh, who is also a Norwegian international yeah. team colleague from her, uh, she said afterwards uh, that she was so shocked and nobody told them what had happened when when extra yeah. time started. She asked the Arsenal players, "Do, do you know anything about Frida?" So this shows uh, how wow. concerned everybody was, and yes. yeah, and uh, Goro yeah. Reiten said, uh, "Yeah, we lost, we lost the cup final, but uh, the more it counts that uh, that my friend Frida is, is oh, doing yeah. good." So, yeah, I think this this says enough. It was yeah dramatic, and uh, yeah, fortunately, I didn't realize at that moment. Oh. Yeah. I mean, it, 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 well, I mean, the game, obviously, it was right at the end of the 90 minutes, wasn't it? When it was in stoppage time at the end of the 90 minutes. And, you know, yeah. almost, and I know, obviously, look, looking back now, obviously, with what happened in extra time and winning the game and stuff like that. But at the time, I didn't want the game to carry on. I just no. couldn't, I couldn't focus on the football after that. You know, seeing that happen. And yes, OK, yeah, we, we didn't know at the time in the ground what was going on, how, you know, that she was actually OK. You just see her getting led off on the stretcher. You're thinking, oh, my God, that is not great. That is not good at all. And it was almost like I thought they can't carry on playing after that, surely. They can't carry the game on. And, of course, they did. And, obviously, once once the game gets going again, you get back into it again. And you don't forget what's happened, but you kind of you can focus more on what's happening on the pitch, I suppose. And that's what the, the, the player did. You have to say they deserve a lot of credit for that because it must have been really really difficult to see your teammate go through what she was going through on the pitch and then you've got to carry on and try to win the game i mean the fact that they did that and what they gave in extra time and i do think that you know it's been mentioned that chelsea were tired yeah maybe they were but in extra time you could see we had one extra little bit of motivation that they didn't have and that was to win that game for frida yeah, to win it for themselves and win it for the fans, everything else as well. But that would have been the overriding thing at that moment, wasn't it? We're going to win this for Frida. And I bet that was said in extra time. I bet the players said that. We're going to go out and win this for Frida. And you could see that they wanted... In extra time, we were the miles better team. And we fully deserved to win that game in extra time. Yeah. And I think that was one of the reasons why. And, yeah, it, it was... It was horrible. It was a horrible thing. I, I can't get it out of my head, actually. All week, it's been... I can't actually get it out of my head seeing that happen. No, and it's not easy to do, no. To I actually, obviously, I, your initial feelings are it's a lot worse than the it's turned out to be, thankfully. You know, you fear the worst when you see it. It's like, oh, my God, that was that was horrible. Um, but luckily, it seems as though it's not it's not going to be any long-term damage and she's going to be okay. No. And let's hope we can get back and play football again because that's what we all want to see, isn't it? As Greg says there, and let's hope her recovery is swift and hopefully she comes back strong. Yeah, exactly. That's... You know, she's in the she's in the right place. She's been looked after, and I'm sure they'll make the right decisions going forward on when and if she can play again, and what the what the issues were, and all this kind of stuff. But yeah, I mean, what was it like on the telly, though, Emma? Did they make a lot of it on the telly? Because the, the, I don't see the game live. Was they did they make a lot of it or not really? Or did they try not to? 
focus no. on because I know it's something you don't really focus too much on on the telly, do you really? Yeah. No, I can't imagine. I was gonna say, I can't imagine where it must have been like the ground and sudden the shock of it happening and suddenness. And yeah, I think in the, the crowd, when they must have realized it must have been just nothing was shocking. Hopefully, that she's okay. I mean, I've not seen that happen in a while. It reminds me a bit of the situation early in the season. I don't know if you recall when Tom Locker collapsed on the pitch for Luton against Bournemouth and they had to abandon the game there. Yeah, 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 but yeah, I remember that as well. It's terrible that these things happen, but thankfully she's okay now. They released a statement uh, uh, early in the week saying, yeah, it was nothing cardiac related that she's doing a few tests, but it was only right for her not to play for Norway. She needs a bit of rest now. Hopefully she'll get fit and healthy. But no, there was definitely a concern on the TV. Robin Cowan and Rachel Brown Finnis, who were doing the commentary, they said, yeah, the game has been stopped here. It was definitely a concern in their voice in Somba, and even in the pundits, who was doing it, it was Alex Scott, um, Ellen White, Farrah Williams, Anita Sante. There was definitely a concern on their... Um, voices as well, and even in the highlights package, though, in the evening, they said, Yeah, we all hope that she's okay. The Irish presenter, his name I forget, is it? Sarah, Sarah Mulcairin, she was with Judy Flaherty and uh, and uh, Keris Harrop in the studio. They were all very concerned, and think, thankfully, and when they when news had come through in extra time that she was okay, Rachel goes in the commentary box, Oh, that's the best news that I wanted to hear. So, no, there was definitely concern in their voice. It was good yeah. to see, and uh, must have just been a shock of what happened. and to go through that is not very nice. We thank thank goodness she's okay. And uh, yeah, as I said, uh, Stina even knows, uh, we know the relationship between her and Frida and they were, they're like besties. And uh, it was good that she was able to score that goal and do it for Frida. Yeah, and you saw the, tw- I don't know if you saw the Twitter page after the game, but no, there was definitely a lot of, um, a lot of uh, yeah. good feeling towards Frida and the fact she got um, better. So no, there was definitely a concern and it was horrible to watch. I mean, what's that? I was following on my phone as well. I was like, what's going on here? I said, oh, no, but thankfully she's okay now. And, yeah, we just wish all the best. And you never want to go through that as a player again. I know, uh, I think it motivated the team even more, but the fact yeah. uh, after what happened, but um, it's not nice to see. And hopefully yeah, um, hopefully she'll um, she'll be uh, fully recovered and able to play again soon. Let's hope so, yeah. I mean, we don't know exactly what's going on, but, yeah. I mean, Stina was very quickly on the scene as well. She sprinted across, actually, when she saw it. Uh, yeah, she was one of the first ones there as well. You know, obviously they're best friends as well. So, um, but yeah, it, it was the atmosphere in the ground. It was like just silent, wasn't it? It was just, you know, completely silent for like five five minutes. And when you know you're in a cup final at the end of extra time and it's completely silent, you, it's it's quite an eerie kind of atmosphere to, yeah. be, to be. Actually, it was it was really really shocking. Um, Greg says what is worrying is she's only 24, very fit. Arsenal. I only have an update about her yesterday. I mean, to be fair, maybe, you know, she's been having tests, hasn't she? And I suppose what they don't want to do is release a statement before they know all the full facts that they that they need. And I think I, I wasn't surprised it took them a long while to give an update, really, because she would have needed tests, wouldn't she? You know, when you're clapped on a pitch, you're going to have to have lots of different tests for lots of different reasons. But they need to find out what's caused it and what they need to do to try and prevent it happening again. So I, I think they, they needed the time, and I wasn't surprised that it took them that long. And I, I still don't even think they really know now what's caused it by the sound of no, it. No, no. It, it doesn't appear to be a, a long-term, sort of a, a long-standing cardiac issue. Obviously, it must be some sort of cardiac issue to make her collapse on the pitch. Yeah. But, um, you know, let's hope the medical people get it, get it sorted and they can make the decision on a future playing um, whether it's this season or or not, whatever it, whenever it is, we just have to you know keep keep everything crossed for her. And um, to be honest with you, whether she plays football again or not, to me is a little bit irrelevant now. As long as she's okay and she can you know um, be healthy in her life, that's the most important thing, isn't it? If she can play football as well, that's a bonus, isn't it? Let's be honest, we'll be delighted to see her playing again. But yeah, as long as she's really. okay and her health is more important than anything else, isn't it? Oh, so, that matters. Yeah, that's what matters. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, it does. And if 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 she can, if we see her playing football again, brilliant because she's a she's a decent, great player. She had a great game actually as well until that moment. I thought she worked so hard. You know, she was everywhere. You know, and yeah, not not great. Um, Greg says, as Russo said after the game, it was fitting. Frida's best friend scored with it. Yeah, yeah, I suppose it was really. Yeah, it, it was. It was a great moment. You know, for for Steena, obviously anyway. But yeah, I think it meant a little bit more to everybody. Um, because because of that, and yeah, um, who better to score the goal, um, of course, than Stina? So, yeah, it, it kind of was almost like the perfect finish, wasn't it? I suppose to the game, really, that with everything that had happened, um, and, and all, all that kind of stuff as well. Um, of course, after the game, um, while we were all celebrating and <laughs> excited. Um, oh. It came to light later on about some little incident with a certain Chelsea manager 
um, getting a little bit um, overly aggressive with our manager on the pitch, which um, she decided to blame him, of course. What would you expect? Anything else, Mema Hayes? Um, and obviously, I didn't, I didn't know that had happened at the time. I wasn't aware that had gone on because we were too busy celebrating the fact the game had finished and we'd won and everything else, and it was just great. But um, obviously, seeing it on the, on the telly afterwards and seeing actually what Emma did, and whatever the reasons behind it, I don't think you can react like that and then no. in a press conference afterwards, turn around and say that Jonas needs to look at his behaviour and male aggression. <laughs> I'm thinking, hold on a minute, you pushed I in. I look back at all of the incident before, Jonas at no point was aggressive. He made a point about the multi-ball thing to yeah. Aaron Cuppert was that throw. He wasn't aggressive. He wasn't in her face. And what happened was Aaron Cuppert turned around and went towards him in a quite aggressive way. Yeah, that's what it seemed, so, yeah. Look at her own behaviour, the behaviour of her own players before she starts throwing criticism at everybody else. And of course, on top of all that as well, the FA have made a complete bottle job of it by not charging her. Imagine yeah, if she'd pushed a female coach, they would have charged her 100%, right? If she'd pushed a female coach, they would have charged her. Why on earth aren't they charging her for pushing him? That's Why right. On earth aren't they that sending out? Not only to football, but in the world, that women can attack men, and that's fine. But they can't attack other women, or they can't, or men can't attack women at all, right? Which is which is fine. But you cannot allow that to happen. The FA had to charge her. They had to. But that's irresponsible from the FA. It's irresponsible from Emma Hayes. What she came out of afterwards, and quite honestly, I'm I'm gonna be pleased to see the back of her. The sooner she leaves this country, the better for her. <laughs> <laughs> and the FA are an absolute disgrace no, as well. To be honest, they're no, an absolute disgrace. And it's just, I mean, I can't believe. I mean, you see it at the time and you think, yeah, okay, whatever it is. But you think, well, she's going to get charged. She's going to get a fine. She's going to get a touchline ban. No, they're not even charged her. How on earth have they reached that decision? Based on what? Based on what? How can they not charge her? It's ridiculous. It's just ridiculous. Anybody else does that to anyone else, they get charged by the FA. They get a ban. Arteta gets a ban for jumping up and down on the touchline. Do you know what I mean? Ridiculous. <laughs> the FA need to, honestly, whoever run, is ever in charge of the discipline at the FA needs to be fired, all of them, sacking a lot of them. I got I got a ban for football earlier this it season. It is a joke. It is a joke, man. I agree. And Emma Hayes does that on the pitch in, in front of uh, watching millions of people, embarrassing Disgrace. herself, Disgrace. embarrassing women's football. And the FA just laugh at it and say, oh, 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 that's funny. All right, Emma, we'll let you off. Don't worry. It's fine. Do you know what I mean? Come on, hey. ridiculous. I mean, and what, what have you made of all of that? I mean, it's just it actually really annoyed me. Not not what happened didn't annoy me so much. It was it was laughable actually. Her, her reaction was laughable. But the FA just not even doing anything about that oh. is just ridiculous, isn't it? Yeah, that's that's the point. I think uh, a lot happened uh, due to emotions, and uh, you can you can say this this happened in, yeah in this special atmosphere and the emotion, but. Uh, the FA should have uh, a fine and at least one at least one match uh, banned from the sidelines. Uh, and if it if it was the other way around, I'm sure that uh, Jonas would have been fine and maybe maybe three or four matches banned, and uh, probably uh, Arsenal wouldn't wouldn't have been able uh, to keep him as manager if he no, would have yeah. if he would have shown. Uh, or uh, if, if a, a male uh, manager did this to a female manager, then he would lose his job. <laughs> and she she sits in the press conference and, and talks about male aggression. What what was the male? I know. Okay, oh. he was he was out of his coaching zone, and uh, he confessed that he used words like uh, uh, "stop cheating" or "you're cheaters," and and he shouted this to the to the the uh, uh, coaching staff. Okay, this is not correct. He's He's a role model for not only for his players but also for for the young uh, boys and girls who watch this. He shouldn't leave his coaching zone. He shouldn't shout at at uh, others. Uh, other uh, side. He shouldn't use word, words like cheaters or cheating. Okay, he, he got booked for this. And if if you say uh, he should have got uh, uh, a red card for this behavior, okay. It was not not a special male aggression. <laughs> what we saw was female aggression from from Emma when, when she shoved him shoved him away. And uh, I, I mean, I haven't read anything about an apology from her. Did she say anything no. about this and said, uh, "I'm sorry, it was due to my emotions. I'm sorry, Jonas." No, nothing. And the FA, uh, they 
they said, okay, it was okay how she behaved. Uh, yeah. <laughs> absolutely That's ridiculous terrible. decision from the FA. And uh, once again, what happened on the pitch was due to emotions. So if you get, yeah, if you, she gets, um, yeah, or, or has to pay 20 or 30,000 pounds uh, as fine, okay. Or ban her for one match. But, but nothing, uh, this, <laughs> this, uh, yeah, allows further further female uh, managers to do this this again and again because uh, they see oh as a female uh, I'm allowed to do this uh, absolutely ridiculous and wrong and uh, once again I I rate Emma as a manager very high yeah. and I, I would say she's the best manager in the WSL okay but she's a very very uh, sore loser. Very, very, very. That's not a statement. Role model for for her team, and uh, if you see players like uh, Lauren James, who's a nasty player, maybe the best player in the WSM this season. But uh, if things don't get her way, she's she's behaving like like a child, really nasty behavior. And that's when you have a manager who behaves this way, who is a mm. sore loser. That, that's mm. yeah. That's what, what Emma was on Sunday. Absolutely. I mean, and, and it's not even... Yes, I, I agree. It's, it's an emotional sport football, right? And that game in particular was very emotional. There was a lot of emotions involved for both for both teams, for both managers, right? There, there was. There's no doubt about that. And I'm not necessarily saying that Jonas was completely blameless, but Jonas was just doing... Um, you know, he was making the point that they had agreed to have one ball... And then they're trying to use two balls because they're suddenly losing. And it's like, well, hang on a minute. You can't do that. He did. Jonas did the right thing. He might not have done it in the right way, maybe. But I didn't see any aggression in him particularly. Not towards Erin Cuthbert anyway. And Erin Cuthbert's a tough old cookie. You know, she's, she's not going to be bothered. Right? But the fact of the matter is, I mean, you know, uh, Nuances of Fate says that Emma Hayes uh, was very irresponsible. If that had been Jonas, the backlash would have been deafening. No, it would. Right? And that's an absolute point. And I think Jonas would have probably lost his job if he did mm -hmm. that. Right? But the, the point we're missing yes. is, if she did that to a female coach, she would have got a charge. She would have probably got a ban. She would have got a fine, right? She would have been charged if it was a female manager that she did it to or coach, right? So why hasn't she got one? Is 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 the fact that she's pushed a man? Is that not important? Is that is that not a statement? Is that still not bad? If she pushes a woman, what what's the difference with her pushing a man? Surely that's actually worse in a way. It's surely that's actually worse. But it's almost like the FA. I think it's it's not it's not worse. It's 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 okay to do that. It's it's fine to do that. And that's what you know. Yes, we know Jonas and any male coach would not be able to do that, right? They would not be able to do that. They would lose their job pretty much on the spot. I think, let alone an FA ban or an FA charge, they would lose their job probably, right? Absolutely. You cannot behave like that. A man to a woman is totally wrong anyway, right? But the yeah. fact of the matter is, the other way around, it's totally wrong as well. It's totally wrong as well. And the same Definitely should happen. Wrong. I'm not saying that Emma Hayes should lose her job for it. No, she's going to lose her job anyway in, in a few weeks' time. But she shouldn't <laughs> necessarily lose her job. But she's 100% have been charged <laughs> by the FA for bringing the game into disrepute, if nothing else. You can't do that live on telly. You cannot behave like that. No matter who, the, who, no matter who you are or who you're, who you're um, having that altercation with, regardless of whether they're male or female, it's irrelevant. You cannot behave like that. You're a professional at the top of your job, right? You cannot behave like that. You can't. And the fact the FA have just washed their hands of it, it's almost like they, they don't know what... They, they, they're too scared to bring a charge against her. And yeah, I think part are. of that is what she said afterwards about male yeah. aggression. And they probably feel that if they was to charge Emma Hayes, then it's sending out a message that, well, male aggression's OK. Even though there was no male aggression on show, it was female oh, aggression. No, it was not. It's it was actually not. worse... Female aggression to a male is actually worse because a male can't respond, right? Male aggression to another male, you can just push them back, right? That's fine. There's no problem there. There is a problem when a female attacks a male because a male is not allowed to fight back, understandably so, right? So that makes it worse. A, a woman to a woman, that's fine. They can fight back, right? There's no problem. If that's what they want to do, it's not great. You don't want to see it, but they can fight back. So it, it, it's actually worse if it's a, a woman attacks a man because a man cannot fight back. Jonas could not have fought back. It, not that he'd want to, but he couldn't. And that's sending out a message. Actually, it's okay for women to do that. It's okay for women to behave like that towards men. It's fine. It doesn't matter. Uh, 
and especially it matters in women's football when there's a lot of male coaches and there's a lot of male coaching staff involved. It, it does matter. It's really, really important. And the FA should have stood, stood, stood up and said, you know what? We're going to charge you with something here. We're going to charge you with everything that we can possibly charge you with. I would have banned her for the rest of the season for the touchline, quite honestly, for that. You cannot do that. With what she said as well, she's completely banned. When you think some players have got banned for things that they've said about referees, for example, right? They've called yeah. referees in. They, they criticise the referee's decision. Managers have done that and got a ban, right? Just for words that don't mean anything. She was physically aggressive to a fellow uh, coach on the pitch. Unacceptable. And the FA have made themselves look an absolute It's a disgrace. It's a disgrace. I mean, Emma, uh, obviously, did you see that happen at the time or was it only after it was like us? I mean, we didn't see it happen. I didn't even know about it until we got home and we watched it on the telly. It's like, oh, OK, wow. No, no, no. <laughs> that was a bit... Oh, we, it? I was following there, and then when I came back from the temple, and then I saw the whole game back, no extra time. We're like, yeah, I couldn't believe what I was watching at times. So I don't know, they, yeah, I, I don't know. It wasn't a heat. It wasn't a heat of the moment they necessarily. They didn't really comment on it too much at the time, and either the live coverage or the at the end. I think, yeah, just the moment. I think they were saying, but I can't remember exactly what was said uh, on the punditry uh, by the pundits on either the live coverage or the. All the highlights, but yeah, I mean, I think it just goes to show, as Andreas rightly said, she's a really bad loser. And you know, I think he just went up to shake her hand, and all he does was just push him out of the way and yeah, says, No, it's and then did. increases of male aggression. And I think it was summed up perfectly. I don't know if you read the Guardian's weekly um, women's football review, Susie Rack, who's a very well renowned uh, women's football correspondent, said, Yeah, it's for to accuse to accuse of Jonas of that is a dangerous denigration of someone's character. And he couldn't, she couldn't be more right, he was trying to denigrate her completely. And uh, accuse him of lacking professionalism, and it was her who pushed the boundaries. He didn't do anything, as you say, with the yeah. multi balls. But I didn't see the incident itself. But yeah, they seemed well wide. As I said, they were completely wide of the mark. Erin Cuthbert, if anything, he didn't get close to Erin, and Erin uh, uh, was um, was maybe getting too close to him for her to do that. It's yeah. just complete. It's, it's it's complete lack of professionalism on her part, and it's it's a disgrace that she should be allowed to act in that way. When you know, it's just that uh, she should be congratulating her for winning the final. And um, she'll be congratulating Jonas Ford in the final. And yeah, it's uh, I don't know what to make of it. I just knew the FA weren't going to do anything about it. I'll go back to an incident a few years ago, a few seasons ago, when you remember that uh, when you we were playing, I think it was Manchester City away, and Bunny Shaw's goal, which was the referee intervened in, was allowed to stand despite the fact that she didn't stop the game. Arsenal players mm -hmm. surrounded the referee for that. And they were charged for their for, for surrounding the referee. Right, they were, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they were, yeah. I, I know, I know it was two years ago. I know it was two years ago. I'll get bringing that up. And then the FA does something right. regardless. And you know, you, and you say verbal words can mean but pushing someone, it's just it's like what 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 is in their rules for somebody to be punished in that way? It's like she's done so much she can get away with it because she's like the best. No, no, you don't you don't treat her just because of what she's achieved, you know, just do your job properly and uh, so I, I knew that was going to do nothing about it, and you know, in a way, I hope I hope it turns them right, and I, I hope I hope they go on and, and win nothing now in a way. And yeah, no, but the one thing that didn't make me chuckle earlier was I saw a Twitter post which had a very old young Emma Hayes back in two thousand seven alongside Vic Akers, and someone posted the their picture saying, oh, "This is the best team she's ever been part of," which was quite funny actually as well. So the no, only quadruple she's going to win the only was when she was like, oh. she's going to be part of. Yeah, exactly. That was funny. Right. But no, it yeah. shouldn't be. We shouldn't condone that type of behaviour. It was out Absolutely of order, not. you know. It, it's not surprising that she's got away with it. They're such an incompetent organisation, and yeah, it just goes to show what what are they thinking, what they're playing at. They need to seriously look at what 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 uh, the what uh, the boundaries are for that. And uh, yeah, it's she's a really bad loser. And yeah, as you rightly put on that list, and Andreas, maybe they need to put salt on that list as well. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean. The the only the only good thing the only positive I can think of is that the FA won't be running women's football next season. It's this new company taking hey, Nico, over. Yeah, that's, that's good. That's good. The that's FA good. shouldn't be running anything. They can't even no, run the bar. What, what on earth they is going on? So I'm quite glad. This to me shows that they're they're not fit for purpose. The FA in anything that they do, anything that they've done over the last 25, 30, 50 years, probably. I mean, they, they don't forget the FA actually banned women's football. Let's remember that, right? Yeah. They actually banned women's football. The FA. That's how incompetent and stupid they are, right? Yeah. And they're still running football. They're still running football, but luckily they won't be running the women's football next season, which is great. And I can't wait <laughs> to get rid of them. And they shouldn't be running it. I say they shouldn't be running it. I wouldn't even let them run my bath. Honestly, they're just incompetent <laughs> fools. <laughs> And yeah. local FAs are even worse, by the way. I don't think it's just the, the, the top the top tier of it. It goes all the way down to grassroots level. They're all absolute idiots, a lot of them. 
no, you know, they're stuck in their suits. They don't know what, and honestly, they haven't got a clue about football. They haven't got a clue about life. They haven't got a clue about anything. They don't. They, don't. they, don't. they should just, they, they should be, football should move away now. The, the FA was all right in 1888 when the Football League started or whatever it was, right? They were fine then because that's about where they haven't moved forward from there yet. They still think it's 1800s, right? So get rid of them. Football needs to move away. Women's football is doing the right thing. And I don't even care now going forward what this new company is like, what they do. I don't care. Anyone but the FA will do for me running it. Anybody else. Give, let, yeah, let anyone absolutely. try it. Do you know what I mean? Get yeah, rid of yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, But yeah, uh, you know, what, what can you say? Um, Angie's with us. How are you doing? Good to see you. Uh, a quick visit. Yeah, uh, thank you very much. Um, Hayes has no class. No, she doesn't. Absolutely not. She has no class whatsoever. Of course she doesn't. But no one seems to be bothered <laughs> except us. Um, I, I, I don't know, it's ridiculous, really. Uh, Terry says, male aggression in a fight. Uh, my money's on salty. She probably eats at least one yona at the end of breakfast. <laughs> she probably does. She probably does. I, I, I agree with that. I don't know what she's worried about. You know what I mean? She, I'm sure, I'm sure if Ace can look after herself, let's be honest. I don't think she has to worry so uh, uh, I, I thought of Terry. I couldn't go. I'm thinking of Terry when I saw what she did. I could not stop thinking of the salty, salty, salty. I yeah, know, exactly. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's a bad loser. Come on, come on, Man City. Come on, Barcelona. Come on, Man United. Hope they win nothing now. That'll be good. No, 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 no. Don't worry about Man City. Us. They'll get Man City lose all their games. Chelsea lose all their games. We win the league. Don't worry about <laughs> City to win. We can win. Um, anyway, Greg says, typical Chelsea trying to change the rules. So exactly, yeah, yeah, that's, that's what, exactly what it is. They agreed, to, they agreed to one ball. So we used one ball all the way through. And then as soon as they're losing, oh, we're going to use a different ball now. No, no, you're not, you're not allowed to do that. So well done, Jonas, for standing up for yourself, mate. Well done. And don't listen to Emma Hayes. She's an absolute nugget. And the, I say, as soon as she's left <laughs> this country, I'll, 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 I'll actually drive her to the airport when she goes to America. I'll drive her there. Absolutely <laughs> free of charge. Come on, Emma. I'll drive you there. We'll have a nice <laughs> chat on the way. We? Then you'll find out what Mayla Griffin's like. Um, well, let's hope she doesn't anyway. ruin Emily Fox when she manages her as well. <laughs> well, Emily Fox won't have her, will we? Emily Fox won't entertain that nonsense, will she? She'll, she'll, she'll be the one smashing her all over the place. Um, Terry says, doesn't the law say if you put your hands on someone, it's assault, no yeah. matter if you're male or female or green, blue, pink hair? Or... Yeah, no, exactly. It is assault. <laughs> it was assault. I mean, yes, okay. She she, she went like, um, he came to take her hand and she pushed it. But yeah, you're right. It technically is assault. It, it is. And the FA don't, don't care. Honestly, they don't care. And, and that, that's that's the worst thing about it is. Um, LG says, uh, with the right coach, Russo will bang goals for Arsenal, as evidence tonight. Well, she's got one goal for England tonight. And she scored, what, you know, 11 goals for Arsenal this season. So, you know, does that prove much? <laughs> I don't know if it does. I mean, you've got to remember, though, when, when she's playing for England, she's playing as a centre-forward. Whereas when yeah. she plays for Arsenal, she's got a different role in the team. Steen is our centre forward for Arsenal. That's why Steen scores the goals that she does, and Russo doesn't. They play a different role. She plays a different role for England. And yeah, you could play Russo in that role for Arsenal, and maybe, mm. and I think she'd score more goals. But she doesn't play that role because that's not what her strengths are for me. She's better doing what she does for Arsenal and playing Steen with her, who can score the goals. That, that's the way forward, isn't it? Hannah uh, Hannah says Emma Hayes and LJ, uh, they're the same. Yeah, they are the same. Exactly. Yeah. Well, she's oh, she's the image of her manager. She's not the only one though. Chelsea have got. I was saying this right on um, during the game. I was saying to Paula that you look through. We was looking. You look at the players on the pitch, right? It's very difficult to like any of those Chelsea players. It's very difficult to like. They're not very likable, are they? Any of them, right? You look at the Arsenal players. Yeah, you know, okay, we're <laughs> Arsenal fans. But I think as a neutral, you look at the Arsenal fans. They're quite likable, aren't they? Those players are likable characters, aren't they? But how can you not like Beth Mead? How can you not like Leslie Russo? How can you not like Steena? How can you not like Lotta? You know what I mean? How can you not like these people? They're very likeable, like most of Arsenal players are. Look at Chelsea's team. Erin Cuthbert, horrible. LJ, horrible. You know, Sam <laughs> Kerr, horrible. You know what I mean? Oh, they're full of horrible players. They're the image of their manager, aren't they? <laughs> Well, to be fair, I quite like Guru Wrighton and Johanna Ritten Connery. I think they're good. They're all right. I like Connery and Wrighton. They're, they're horrible. Right. Ramirez, horrible. They're all horrible. <laughs> they look horrible. They look horrible, nasty people. I don't like any of them. Uh, like, you look at the Arsenal players. They look. They look angelic, don't they? All the Arsenal players are all angelic. They're all angels. They're, they're fantastic. They love it. I think we've seen an audition for the next running of of women's football, haven't we? <laughs> yeah, we, we should take over. We should take over it definitely. Um, Wayne says. Uh, um, I'd take uh, an LG no. City seeing as we already Go lost on. to Chelsea in the league. I'd much rather see City win the league if we're going to do Yeah, I know, but you see, I I'm stupid enough to believe that we can still win the league. So I want us to beat City. I want us to win every game and I want them to lose to everybody else. That's what I want. 
I don't want us to lose to City to help no. to mean Chelsea don't win the league. I want us to beat City and win the league ourselves. <laughs> I yeah. can't get yeah. me. This year, there's still quite a few games left after. It's not like it's the last game. Of the, if it was the last game of the season, we were out of it. Yeah, let them win to win the league. Absolutely, I'd, I'd agree with that. But when there's still games to play and we could still technically win it, I can't. I couldn't do that. I just couldn't do it. I, I, we have to beat them. Quite honestly, because I don't really like Man City either. Let's be honest, I don't. <laughs> so I don't really want them to win the league. But yes, out of the two, of course, I prefer Man City to win it. But overall, I want us to win it. Of course. Uh, and says, "Yeah, Cuthbert's another vol." Yes, she is. Yeah, and that's why it was it was yeah. great when it was seen and it pushed her out of the way for that winning goal as well. It was, <laughs> that was sweet. That was a sweet moment. That when it was Erin Cuthbert, she just said, "No, I'm pushing you out of the way." And when like Vicky did it about four times in the game, just just smashed her all over the place. And that's what you want to see. You want to, you have to get in Chelsea's face. And that's what we were brilliant at. And yeah, Emma didn't like it, clearly. She can't deal with it. She can't deal with losing. And Jonas has done it twice to her this season. You know, he's done it to her before in other last season's final, other games in the in the WSL. He, he's kind of got her number and it? it's a shame she's going in some ways because I think this team, and it's what I want to come on to actually because obviously winning the, the Continental Cup two years running is, the, is, is a good effort, right? We can't criticise that. Is it enough for Arsenal? No, of course it's not. Arsenal should be winning league titles, right? Arsenal should be competing at the top end of the Champions League. That's what we should be doing. But I believe, and I said this after the game, and it became obvious to me watching the game, that this is quite a new team in many ways. Emily Fox has just come in. She's massively going to improve this team, right? Leia yeah. Cadena, as we mentioned, you know, she's only recently coming into the team. What a big impact she's going to have. You know, and then you've got, obviously, this is um, Lessie's first season at, in the team as well. You know, her impact is going to grow in the future years. And I really think that we're building something really special here. And we've shown in the big games, you know, we've, we've hammered Manchester United. We hammered Chelsea. We've beaten them in the cup final. Um, you know, we've we beat Man City in the league. We, we've, in the in the big games, we can, we've rose to the occasion. Our problem this season has been, in some of the lesser games, we've been inconsistent. We've made silly mistakes. We've dropped stupid yeah, points, absolutely. right? That can be put right. That can be put right. What can't be put right is being good enough to beat the top teams. You're either good enough to beat them or you're not. And we are. We've shown that we're good enough to beat those top teams. We've just got to find that consistency now to when we play yeah, the lesser absolutely. team to not make those silly mistakes. And I can see in the summer, we're going to buy, bring in some players, right? Obviously, we are. Transfer window. We'll bring in some players, right? Add, add into the, the depth that we've got. One or two might leave as well. But I can see what we're building here now. And I think this team, Chelsea are going to go through a transitional period next season without Emma, regardless of what manager they get. They can get the best manager in Europe and they may well be looking to do that, right? But they're going to have a transitional period because those players are used to playing under Emma Hayes. When when Fergie left Man U, look what happened. Wenger leaves Arsenal, look what happened. You know, it's happened all the time when a successful manager leaves a club a new manager comes in with the same players and it's difficult. And I think Chelsea are going to have a season, certainly one season next year, where they're not going to be as good, right? Man City are always up and down anyway. We've got a massive chance next season. We've, we're now going to have a settled team. This team's going to go into next season. Yes, a couple of additions, but we're not going to make massive changes. We don't need to. And I think this is the, this is the starting point for me. I'm prepared to give Jonas the opportunity. He's deserved, I think, the opportunity next season to get this team going and to move us to the next level, which is winning the league title and yeah. competing in the Champions League, right? I think Jonas deserves that. But, and I can see massive positive signs. I mean, do you think so, Andreas? Can you see this team being able to grow next season and become th that next level that we need to get to if we're going to compete for league titles? Can you see this team doing it? Because I can. I hope so. Because uh, winning uh, the Conti Cup is, is good. It's a trophy for us, but... Uh, we should compete for the league title for yeah mm. until the last day and uh, yeah. yeah and uh, we should be in champions league at least in group stage but uh, normally going through group stage this this is what yeah. what yeah what we expect from from this team and from this squad uh, i said this uh, very often jonas uh, convinces top players to sign for the arsenal or or to extend their contracts Sometimes in this season he didn't bring the best out of this squad, and uh, it, yeah, I hope I hope I'm convinced that we will finish third this season. So we will be back to Champions League football, and then in next yeah. next season is is the one in which yeah in which Jonas uh, has to prove that he's is a top 
quality manager. He brings the best out of this squad. Uh, as I said, we must compete for the league title. We can't we can't deal with situations like losing against Spurs or West Ham. Uh, that's not that's not Liverpool. Arsenal. Liverpool. Liverpool, okay, Liverpool is on, on fourth position right now, but um, what really hurt uh, were, were the defeats, the loss at uh, Spurs and West Ham. This is impossible normally for us. It's not, not our level. And uh, being out of Champions League, okay, there were special circumstances with, with the World Cup, coming back from the World Cup with, with a lot of new players, etc. But next season, uh, no excuses. We must no. qualify for Champions no. League group stage. We must compete for the league title. With all this situation around uh, Chelsea, and uh, yeah, if we are lucky, then um, then Mark Skinner will extend his contract at United. This will be good for us, and, <laughs> and also um, send him uh, to Gareth, Chelsea. Uh, send him to Chelsea. That'd be good. Uh, at Chelsea, I would prefer Hager Reese for Chelsea. That would be a good <laughs> idea. <laughs> yeah, actually, yeah. Or yeah. right. get Sonia yeah. Bombast or as Jonas's as assistant. Martina for Stecklenburg from Germany, also a good candidate for Chelsea. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's a special situation <laughs> to regroup. Uh, even if Bompasteur is, is coming from, from Lyon, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a new country, a new league for her, uh, a new yeah. language. Uh, this will be a yeah, difficult situation for Chelsea. Yeah, of course, they get Millie yeah. Bright back, they, they will get uh, Sam Kerr back, uh, but only um, at the end of, of the first half of the season. So next season is yeah very very important for us and we want to we want to win more than the Conti Cup and and we want to to have Champions League nights at the Emirates. This uh, oh this absolutely is, uh, no question. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely yeah now yeah. do yeah I mean you know that, that's been that's been the, the biggest disappointment this season in many ways you know after we sold out the Emirates last season for that semi final. But then not being in the group stage at all this season was a massive before this season even started. And I think that maybe put a little bit of a downer on things, didn't it? Then we lost to Liverpool and it was all a bit, you know. So the fact that we've ended up winning a trophy, it's not the, the trophy we would all have picked as our first choice. No. But again, I've said it earlier, you know, it's, it's an important trophy. It's 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 a major trophy and we've 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 done really well to to have won it. So yeah. Um Wayne says there, uh, now we ain't winning a league. If we if we'd beat Chelsea, then yes, uh, but because uh, we lost to Chelsea. I'd lay down happily to stop Chelsea um, yeah. third and trophy go again next season. Yeah, I mean, I kind of get you. I get what you're meaning, and I'm not necessarily disagreeing with you. But while it's still mathematically possible for us to win it, I'm going to want us to keep winning games until it's no longer possible. And if that means it's going to be no longer possible with two games to play because of the six points, then I'll believe until then, <laughs> unfortunately. And I want us to win every game until then, even if it means beating City and it means yes. Chelsea win the league. We can't control what happens, can we? All we can do is control our own games. And we we could yeah. we could beat we could lose to City, and then City might lose their next game anyway. So we might as well have beaten them, and then yeah. they lose their next game. You know what I mean? We can't look like it. we just have to play our game, play for ourselves, not play for anyone else. Play for ourselves, and for ourselves, it is winning as many games as we can and finishing as high as we can if it's first, second or third. And that's what that's what we've got to do as as, as professionals anyway. I, I want to see us do that. Um, Greg says, Hayes is only a big edge. She hasn't got the stamina to take training. Well, no, she can just sit on a little bench and watch, watch them train, can't she? Watch them run around while she has her cake and uh, biscuits, whatever it is. Do you know what I mean? Um, Terry says, if it doesn't work out for Salty in America... Um, she, we should let bygones be bygones and give Sorty a cleanest <laughs> job at London. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, maybe that's what we need to do. Maybe she, maybe she could work in the kitchen. She looks like a dinner lady, actually, don't she? So she'd probably be good as a dinner lady in, in the in the canteen for our players. Um, so I think that's her next yeah, job. Actually, yeah, yeah. That's right. she'll be she'll be a dinner lady. She'll be the dinner lady for the uh, Arsenal women's team at London and a men's team. She could be a dinner lady for the men's team as well, couldn't she? And then she could start pushing people around. Yeah, let's see how she gets on there, shall we? Let's, let's see. Let's see her push. Um, let, let's see. Uh, let's see her push Thomas Partey around, shall we? Let's see how she gets on there. Shall we? Yeah, that'd be interesting. Wouldn't it? Uh, let's see the yeah. male get the men, shall we? Um, but no, yeah, you might be right, Terry. Actually, maybe that's that. Maybe that's her future. It'll be away from actually uh, managing the team. What we'll see. Um, but yeah, so no, I, I'm confident next season. I mean, am I? Do you think this team can go on next season and really, really? push on and, and make that next step because we need to now don't we there's no more excuses next season about rebuilding and this that and the other I think we've had two no. seasons of young yeah. we've been trying to get this squad together he's got it now it's all in place next season's no excuses we've got to go and do it haven't we 
Yeah, no, we had the injuries. We had to have blighted us last season fine. Yeah, we can't really use the excuse this season. It's just about getting the consistency. Yeah, now we really have to challenge the top two and really just uh, start to show what we're made of. Yeah, OK, we had the World Cup after that, but you still see, look at some of the performances we had. Like we said, the Chelsea defeat previously, the Spurs, Man United. We just need to... We need, uh, we need a bit more better squad depth, I think, yeah. And uh, <clears throat> the recruitment in the summer is going to be absolutely key. Who can we get? Uh, the players coming back will be key as well. The players we've signed, I think, yeah, they've shown that they can already adapt. And, uh, yeah, and hopefully we can, can get what he wants. He can get out, um, keep the players fit. Hopefully not have any too many serious injuries or fatigue. And, yeah, that's just going to be about get, uh, being able to get the best of out of them, knowing your settled lineup every week. Because we've often said this, you know, he doesn't know his best starting 11. He doesn't. He has a lot of dilemmas. It's good to have a dilemma, but we want to see some of the um, some things change, like trying to start Lessie and Steena up front together, for example. And, yeah, should he have his, uh, um, hopefully, get a, start, a settled starting 11. That's what we want to see, that plays week in, week out, like you see often with, uh, with uh, the teams challenging for the title, whether it be in the Premier League or the... WSL and uh, yeah, he can't use those excuses. He's gonna just have to. Yeah, I was just reading an article not long ago. He said, yeah, he, it's now down to Leonas to build on this and then take them to the next level. And we've seen what we can do in the Champions League. We've seen with the best with Leon and Wolfsburg last year, for example. And uh, yeah, we need to take it to the next step. And uh, okay, I, I take back what I said. Um, he is a good manager. He's shown he can uh, tactically outwit the best as we've shown and uh, remain cool and calm under pressure, unlike his counterparts. But now it's down to. And he speaks well, as we know. He said he speaks very well, and he knows what he wants. And now, he's, now, now, now it's time for the action to take place on the pitch. And uh, we want us to be challenging on all four fronts next season, not just relying on the Conti Cup to save our season. No, exactly. Yeah, the, the Conti Cup great, and it was fantastic. But yeah, it, we need we need more. We need to deliver more now going forward, don't we? Um, I mean, let's win the Conti Cup again. Let's win it three years in a row. Let's not <laughs> dismiss it. But let's add to it and add a couple more to it as well. At least one more to it as well. That's what we need to do. By the way, in this England game, it's still 1-0 to England, by the way. I have to say, Lotta Wuba Moy has absolutely pocketed Steena tonight. She really has. Every time <laughs> Steena's had the ball, she just took it off. Her. Brilliant. She just did so again. Yeah. Just, uh, she just headed away a corner from Sweden as well. She's had a brilliant game, Lotta. Um, I, do hope, I do hope England get another couple of goals and then Steena scores one for Sweden. But um, as long as England win. But Lotta's had a great game um, for England, actually. Brilliant. Um, but no, I think next season's a big... It's a big season next season now for, 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 for Jonas and for Arsenal. And I think if we, um, if we, you know, I think we, we kind of thought that finishing third and winning a Conti Cup two seasons running wasn't good enough, right? And I do feel that there's circumstances that we need to take into account. But next season is it now. If, if we win the Conti Cup and come third next season, I, I would sack Jonas definitely because that wouldn't be acceptable three mm -hmm. seasons. Right? As great yeah. as winning the Conti Cup is, and I, I've said I'm not going to dismiss it, it's a brilliant competition and it's great to win it. But if we need to be doing more now as well, we need to win the league, quite honestly. We need to win league titles again. That's what we need to be doing. So, yeah, next season's a massive season, but I'm really positive. I think we've got some great new players have come in that's going to really um, add an extra dimension to our play. Um, Obviously, Emily Fox and, and Leia Cadena, brilliant signings. Russo, as well as we know. So, I'm excited for next season. I think it's going to be great. But let's let's finish this season strongly. Let's win all our games. And let's see where we end up. If we end up third, second, first, it'd be brilliant. Anyway, doesn't it? Uh, Wayne says, remember when we won it last season? And she said, um, it's their week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's so sly and bitter when it comes to Arsenal. Yeah, she is, yeah. She said last season that we wanted it more because we hadn't won many trophies. <laughs> That this team and now we're beating them again. What's her excuse this time? Nothing, it's just to blame Jonas being aggressive. That's her excuse this time. You know what I mean? Come yeah. on, man. Mark. Just give us some credit for once, eh? Well, how about that? How about that? One just once in your life. Because you wouldn't even be where you are without Arsenal, would you? you know? So we all know that. Um, anyway, yeah, Emma, Emma I'm sorry, Emma, but you know, you, you, you've got away with murder in that game, and you know, but anyway, we beat you, so we don't care who we beat you again. So tough. Um, so, yeah, brilliant stuff. What a great day it was. I mean, Andreas, just before we move away from the final, what were your final thoughts on the day overall, the game and everything? It was great, wasn't it? Yeah, fantastic day. And you can, couldn't have it better. And, uh, yeah, the whole yeah the whole day with, with the coach trip from London to, to Wolverhampton with the supporters club uh, was fantastic. And then driving home with this, this emotions, yeah, just fantastic. And, and the feeling, uh, yeah, we, we are cup winners. It doesn't make a difference. FA Cup, Conti Cup. In this, 
this moment on Sunday, I felt that we are the cup winners. And yeah, it's just a fantastic day. And uh, I think we, of course, the team, the girls deserved it, but we as supporters, we also deserve this this uh, success. When, when you look of, uh, of, of the support and, and how many uh, travel to the away matches uh, that we fill uh, the big stadiums. And I think, uh, yeah, don't misunderstand. When I say we, we as supporters, we deserve uh, a, a success and a winning, winning this trophy. And uh, it was a fantastic feeling. And I'm really, really glad and happy that I came over to England to watch this live in the stadium. Yeah, that's just great. Well done. Yeah, it was. Yeah, I mean, I, I said look, after I, I couldn't get we couldn't get to last year's final right and um i i always uh, i've always kind of had this feeling that i would rather um regret something i've done as opposed to regret something i didn't do last year i regretted not going to that final and we won yeah. and this year i i had, had to be there this year i was not going to miss two finals in a row i had to be there this time and i'm so glad i did even if we'd lost, I would have still been glad to have been there. But the fact that we won in the way that we did, it just made it even better. And, you know, it, I said it earlier on, and it doesn't make a difference to me. When Steena's goal went in, it was like um, when Aaron Ramsey scored the winner in the FA Cup final for Arsenal. Um, against you know, it was like, yeah, it was, it was like, you know, all, all of those great moments. When, when Alan Smith scored the winner in that European final all those years ago, it was... At that moment, it's exactly the same feeling. You know, when Michael Thomas scored at Anfield, in that moment, it's a great feeling because yeah. you've seen your team win something. Yeah. And it yeah. makes no difference what it is. You're there and you've seen it. And it, it's just that, that feeling inside is the same. And, and it is. And it was. On, and I enjoyed Sunday as much as I've enjoyed any other game ever in my life because we won the cup at the end of it in the way that we did a late goal. And I've not enjoyed a game more than that ever. And it's impossible. So how can you enjoy a game more than winning a cup final? You can't. It's impossible. That's in line with all the others. Every single other trophy we've won, that's up there with all of them. Being there to see that was brilliant. And the fact that it was Steena that scored. And I, I've gone on about Steena for the last two or three years, but I think she's brilliant. Underrated. For her to get the goal as well, just capped it all off for me. It couldn't have been better. Couldn't have been, I wouldn't have cared who scored when it came down to it, but the fact that it was Steena... <laughs> Made it even better. <laughs> I mean, Emma, what were your thoughts overall on the, on the on the whole Continental Cup success? You know, seeing them behind me there lift up the trophy, <laughs> the fireworks. Brilliant. Isn't it? Yeah, all the reaction on Twitter and all the the parties that went on the dressing room after, and then the journey back yeah. was great, wasn't it? Yeah, just to see them win and go back, watch that, watch you all back again, and <laughs> yeah, see them winning over silver. Just adds to the as to our growing list of trophies, okay, we may not have been successful as under Vic, but you know, it just keep on. You can't. There's no substitute for trophies, and ultimately, yeah, we need another final. We got to build on it now, and um, yeah, nothing will take that away. It was an emotional day, and it was a great result. And uh, again, both teams on the day didn't con didn't concede the goal or a tactical mask. Okay, it wasn't the greatest game, but Chelsea were poor, and we made them look that way. We are. We had the better chances, and ultimately, I think we deserved to another day, and then. That was good, yeah, and uh, yeah. So let's just hope we can build in it going forward, and uh, long may continue the success. And I think none, there's no as I said, there's no substitute for trophies, and hopefully we can all lead us on to winning the bigger prizes next season. Exactly, yeah. It's a spring ball. That's where it needs to be now, doesn't it? A spring ball. Two, two, two Conti cups in a row is brilliant. Now let's let, let's move on to this. you know we, we we've done that. That's great. Winning Conti cups brilliant. Let's actually go on and win. A league title next season, that would be even better, wouldn't it? That really would be great. Um, Greg says, yeah, um, it was great when the team were in front of the fans all singing. It was, yeah, that was that was a fantastic that was a fantastic moment. It was brilliant. It happened, that happened twice. That happened once at the final whistle when the fans were really singing. And right at the end, before they went off, it, it, the fans were singing it again. And they was, it was, yeah. I must admit, right, I don't particularly like that song. I've got to be honest, I don't. But Which I song? actually think it suits the women's team much better than it suits the men's team. I've got to be honest. It seems to fit with the women's game a lot more. And to be honest with you, it's been in my, I haven't got it out of my head all week because we must have heard it about 20 times. From Andrea singing it on the coach to the fans singing it and the players singing it back at the end of the game. It's just been in my head all week. I can't get rid of it. Was and North London I forever? I, I appreciate the, what it is. And I do think it's perfect for the women's team. It's absolutely, it should be the women's team's anthem, not the men. The men need something better. It's a bit too fluffy for the men's team. We need something better. But for the women's team, it's absolutely perfect. And it was brilliant, actually. 
And um, uh, yeah, obviously, and Vaseline on a coach was a highlight of the weekend. Of course, it was. We, we know that. Absolutely, it was. Is that North London Forever? Yeah, North London Forever. Yeah. Yeah, yes. but well, it's actually called the Angels' name of the song, isn't it? The, the chorus is North London Forever, but yeah. Oh, yeah, um, that's yeah, brilliant. Right, yeah. Absolutely brilliant. Yeah, brilliant, brilliant stuff. Uh, Wayne says, there, Sunday was so nerve wracking for me. Oh, it was for all of us, mate. Uh, I remember uh, both Arsenal guys being nil nil and nervy, and uh, Steena saved us. Yeah, she always saves us. Uh, unfortunately, the men didn't win, but I won't mow that clean shirt. Yeah, absolutely not. No, I mean, that's a decent result at the end of the day. We'll take it. was a good day for Arsenal, wasn't it? Sunday, really. Let's be honest, it was a decent day, could have been a lot, lot worse. So, I was quite happy with it all in the end. Um, so yeah, we are Continental Cup champions again, two years running, eight, well, no, seven times we've won it now. And Chelsea have lost the last three finals in the Continental Cup. What a shame, what an absolute shame they've lost the last three, isn't that a shame? Um, and we won seven, so there you go. <laughs> Who cares? Yeah, um, where, where's your quadruple gone, Emma? Where's it gone? The one you won at Arsenal, is that the only one you're ever going to win? It is, isn't it? What a shame. Um, anyway. <laughs> Um, now, I do believe Andreas has got some questions for us. Have you not? Before we finish. <laughs> yeah. I'm excited about it, actually. I was oh, excited nice about comeback it. by Germany, by the way. 3-2 now. That was a good comeback. Yeah, Germany won 3-2. Just a quick oh, one, sorry, just before we go into a quiz. I know, sorry, I just wanted to mention briefly because I thought it was an interesting one I saw. It's France won Republic of Ireland nil, by the way. What do you make of Anna Patton choosing to play for Republic of Ireland? Mm. Well, she's yeah. got a Declan Rice in reverse, hasn't she? <laughs> yeah, I thought that was an interesting one. Well, it is, yeah, but she's never going to get picked for England, is she? Let's be honest. And if you've nah, got the option to play international football, you're going to take it, aren't you? Let's face it, lots of Wilbur Moyes had to spend two years of playing brilliantly to get a chance for England. Anna yeah, Patton's yeah, got yeah. no chance ever. So yeah. she's made the right decision for her. Yes. I, 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 he... I wouldn't. I, I'd, I'd only ever want to play for England. I could have played international football for Burma for my mum's family, right? But I don't want to play national football for Burma. I want to play national football for England, or I'm not going to bother. Do you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, yeah, it's up to her. Is she going to get the national cap? Brilliant. It's her the best decision for her, isn't it? Because she's never going to get any England team. Let's be no, honest. Not no. this England team. She won't. As much as we love Anna Patton, she's not good enough to play for this England team, is she? So, um, no. I, well, she's got the best I'm person to know, Katie McCabe. So there you go. <laughs> mm. Yeah, but Katie McCabe will help her, won't she? She'll get in the squad, won't yeah. she? She'll get minutes. She'll get cap. But yeah, right, sure. definitely, sure. and of course, you might play against yeah, yeah. England, aren't we? We're in a group. Let's I'm actually going to the game against France at St James's Park as well, so that'll be good. England play France uh, in right, May, yeah. so I'll go to that game. It's going to be good. Looking forward to that um, to see the, this great lionesses team that, that we uh, that we that we love. Um, but no, it is a strange decision, but yeah, I think it's the right one for her career and for for herself, her personal life as well. Yeah. So okay. Andreas, hit us with these questions because they're exciting. Beth Mee's yeah. coming on, by the way, for England as well. So it's all exciting. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, there, there are currently a lot of Japanese internationals are playing in the WSL. Uh, I think uh, right now it's nine Japanese internationals in six WSL uh, clubs. And the most, uh, the most uh, prominent or well-known, uh, Yuri Hasegawa for Man City, Mike Amano yeah. for Chelsea or Hinata Miyazawa for United. So, but how many Japanese internationals did play for the Arsenal women in WSL oh. time? And of course, oh. name them. <laughs> what, so this uh, is in the history of the WSL, yeah? WSL, yeah. Uh, I Rolf think Rolf just scored for Sweden, by the way. Um, Rolf has just scored for Sweden. It's 1-1 one, one, oh, uh, Wembley. Oh. Oh. Another header, actually. Another header across on the right. It was a header at the far post. Very yeah, similar yeah. goal, actually, to what England just scored before. Um, it's Rolfo uh -huh. who scored it. And it's 1 1. So that's not great, really. England need to win this game, but it's still tight. But it was a cross from that right hand side. And at the far post, um, a header from Rolfo. Yeah, close range in the net. 1 1. So um, anyway, let's go back to these Japanese players. So um, how many did you give us a number, or do you just have to name them? Yeah, name them. Yeah. I think I think one one you should know. Obviously, Mana, Mana. Yeah, yeah. it was Boxy, Yeah, obviously. Uh, obviously. There was one. Oh, there was one not that long ago. I do remember. It was around the twenty thirteen side. Um, God, what was her name? Sounded similar to the wife of um, John Lennon's wife, but I can't think what her name yeah. was now. Oh, Yo, yeah. Ono. What's it called? <laughs> that was John Lennon's wife. Isn't it Shinuji Ono or something like that? Uh, she, Shinobu Ono, yes. Oh, Shinobu, that's it, Ono, Shinobu Ono, that's I it, yeah. Remember. How many games did she play for Arsenal? 
uh, 10 WSL uh, games, four FA Cups, six uh, League Cups, and two uh, Champions League matches. She was really? there wow. in 2014. Okay. Yeah. And it's, wow. it's only, wow. only one more name you should know. There's only one more. One more. Oh yeah, it was three Japanese internationals playing uh, Arsenal. Oh, so, sorry, I didn't hear you say three. I thought I didn't hear the number. Okay, so we said Mano, we said Ono. Oh, this one, this other one is more obvious than the other one. <laughs> no, I think the, name, the names are too too strange for us. So. It was also oh. in 2014. Oh God, 2014. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm not going to remember this one. You know, good, oh no, um, oh, that would be hard to remember that one. I wasn't expecting a question about Japanese players, I've got to be honest. <laughs> yeah, I'd have done some research if I'd known we were talking about Japanese players. I, I don't make it too easy for you. <laughs> no, no, definitely not. Definitely not. No. Uh, okay. Wow, well, okay. Um, it was in 2014, also from January uh, 14 until. January 2015, a central midfielder. And if you don't know her, then you, you can't Central guess. midfield. Central yeah. midfield. No, I'm not oh, going to yeah. I can't think of... So I, can't, I can't even picture... I can't even... I, I couldn't even picture that Ono, let alone this one. Oh, Stina's going to score again. Oh, she's missed. stina has gone one-on-one -on -one with Mary Ertz and put it wide. Wow. Oh. That was a big chance for Swell. I thought she'd score. She's one on one with a keeper there. See, that's Steena's movement here, like, is brilliant. In between the two defenders, she gets to the wrong side of Lotta and she puts herself in a great position. She sends Mary out the wrong way and it's gone wide. Oh, my God. That is, if that was an Arsenal miss, everyone would be, would be screaming at her. She should have buried that. That's a bad miss. It was good movement. It was a good run, but she's got to finish that. She did everything right and she just sent Mary out the wrong way and just rolled it past the post, the wrong side. Incredible miss. No, wow. I don't think we're going to get this third one, by the way. I'm not going to get it. Anyway, uh, there's some okay. good news for the England game. Lauren James has just been replaced by Beth Mee, so there's an upgrade. If everyone <laughs> wants one. Uh, I'm not going to get this. Greg, there's, um, Stina just missed an open. Well, it was an open goal, but it was a big chance that she's missed indeed. So maybe England are going to win now. Uh, let's hope so. Um, the, the name know, he said, well, here's an oldie one for you. Why do the Japanese all live in northwest London? Because when they get off the plane and get in a minicab, they always say, hello, mate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's quite funny, actually. That is quite funny, too. It's not funny <laughs> racist, baby, but it's quite funny. Hello, mate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That is, that is that's funny. terrible. That's, Sorry, that's terrible. That's pretty, no, that's, that's pretty funny. That, that's out of the... Um, who was it? Um, who was that comedian that used to say jokes like that in the 1970s? Um, Bernard Ken Manning. Dodd. That's like a Bernard Manning joke, isn't it? Ken, um, oh, Bernard yeah. Manning. I think it was Ken Dodd or something like that. No. Uh, anyway, T Terry says that uh, Steena missed that on purpose for Lotta Wuber. Well, yeah, maybe, maybe she did. I don't think she did. But anyway, um, she, it, it, was a, it was a big miss, a big, big miss for Sweden. I'm not going to get this Japanese midfielder, by the way. I, I'm not, not going to get it. I don't think I will. Her name was Yukari Kinga. Oh, Kinga, yes. I have heard of her. Oh, yeah, Yukari. Yeah, yeah, I've heard of that. I have heard of that one. I've heard of her, yes. I, 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 now you mentioned her name. I don't remember yeah. playing for Arsenal. I can't picture her. And uh, two Champions League matches okay. for us. And uh, Mana, according to my records, only 14 WSL matches, five FA Cup and Conti Cup, and 10 Champions League matches. Yeah. But Iwabot is the highest scoring Japanese player we've had. Yeah. Of course, uh, Mana scored one goal in, in the WSL, one cup, and four Champions League goals for us. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Uh, now you have you have already uh, a part for uh, of my second question. Um, in uh, nowadays, it's uh, uh, when you see the lineup, we have number twenty-three, Alessia Busso, yeah. number twenty-four, Chloe Lacasse, twenty-five, Stina Blitzstein. In former days, it was number one to number eleven. So yes. when uh, when was the last time uh, Arsenal had a starting lineup uh, from number one to number eleven? In the WSL, wow. and and which yeah. which seven players were this? The two Japanese were in this team, so oh, wow. you only need, it need uh, the year. It's quite clear because I told you when and the two Japanese played for us, and uh, the, the remaining nine names on this lineup. 
Okay, so it would have been 2013-2014 season. It was 2014, yes. 2014, 2015. Yeah, got, so this was 2014. Who else? So wouldn't have been any of the current squad, I imagine. None of the current squad. Kim Little might have been in the team then. Yeah, Kim, yeah. No? 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 no. Okay. Oh, what about, oh, surely Jordan Nobbs has got to be in. Jordan there. Nobbs. Jordan Nobbs yeah. would have been. Jordan Nobbs yeah. was number eight, um, yes. Let's say, oh, okay. So then we've got eight, eight more players. Who's the keeper? Same, Would it still same. have been Emma Byrne? Yes, yeah, Emma Byrne. Byrne. Yeah. Um, back for um, Emma Mitchell. Uh, Emma Mitchell, number three. Yes. Emma Mitchell, number three. Um, yeah, what about? Yeah. Oh, surely Kelly Kelly Smith has got to be in there. Mm -hmm. Kelly Smith was number, number 10. ten. Number Rachel 10, Yankee. Yeah. Rachel Yankee. Yes, she was number eleven. Number so how 11, many is yeah. that we've got? So we've got Emma Byrne, Emma Mitchell, Jordan Nobbs, the two Japanese players, Kinga and Ono, and also is um, Alex Scott still playing in. Alex Scott, would she have been playing number two? Yes, Alex Scott number two. Yeah. Uh, Alex Scott this was is a good Arsenal team, this isn't it? What a team this is, by the way. This is a great Alex, Arsenal team. Alex Scott was correct, yes. Yeah. Yeah, Alex Scott yeah, number yeah. two. And Casey yes. Casey Stoney? Yes, yes. What Casey number? Three, three, three. Oh, yeah, Mitchell's three. Oh, Mitchell's oh sorry, three. sorry. Casey Stoney would be four or six then. Five, Casey Stoney. Five. Oh, five, yeah. Uh, what about, what was her name? Was Julie Flaherty in there? No. Okay. A touch oh, player? The other centre back. It would have been the other centre back. Would, Casey, would it have Casey been um, a centre? Casey Chapman? No, a touch player? A Dutch I think from the name, yes. Jensen? No. Dominic Jensen? Dominic Jensen? No, no. no. She was later. Probably, yeah. Uh, how many have we still got? How, how many have we still got to go? How many have we still got to go? Two. Only two. Number six and number nine. Six and, and number nine. Who's number four? Who's number four? Yukari Kinga. Oh, of course, yeah. <laughs> And Shinobu Ono was number seven. Six and nine. One was a Dutch player. Who was around in the Dutch? The around, oh, I'm thinking the only Dutch player maybe around that time. Melis? Manon Melis? No. no it's no, also a difficult, difficult name, I can tell you. It was Anouk Hogendijk. Oh, Anouk Hogendijk. Yes, I've heard of her. Anouk Hogendijk. Yeah. I've heard of Anouk Hogendijk. Oh, yeah. That's number, number nine. six. That's number, number nine. Six. Find out by yourself. She's still she's still playing, I think in in championship right now, not in the WSL. Daniel Carter. Yes. Oh, and Daniel Carter. Oh, very good. Yeah, yeah. that's good. You got it. Well played. Well played. What, what a great Arsenal team, by the way. Apart from the Japanese Amazing. I've never heard of. Oh no, that's a great Arsenal team, isn't it? Let's be honest. That's a decent yeah. team, isn't it? Yeah, when some great names there. Kelly Alex Smith, Rachel Yankee, Jordan Nobbs. What a team. Casey, Casey Stoney. Stoney. Emma Mitchell, Alex Scott. What what a, oh, what a great team that is. I'll say that's a brilliant that team. That was a retro, retro Arsenal team. Yeah, right there. That was a brilliant Arsenal team. Um, wow. That was a good question, actually. And that's the last <laughs> time we played 1 to 11. Is it? Was that the last game of the season that season? I don't know which game, but uh, it was in season 2014. It was the last time that we lined up with number one to eleven in the starting lineup. Wow, that is great, isn't it? <laughs> that is fantastic. Okay, what a, what, a, what a great team as well. Did we win that game? On if we did, we must have won that game with that team. Surely we must have won about eight nil. Wherever we probably with, with these players, uh, probably. <laughs> yeah. I would have thought yes. so. That's, that is a great team, isn't it? What, what a team. Uh, Greg's gone with Yankee. Yeah, Yankee was in there, of course. Rachel Yankee. Um, England will make another sub, actually. Um, Chloe Kelly's coming on, which is good. And Sweden are making a sub as well. Um, it's 1-1. It's 15 minutes to play. It's quite a tense that game, actually, because the first game of the Euros, we're at home. We, we have to get a result of something. We can't lose. We certainly can't afford to lose this game. Um, and, we, you know, we could easily be behind. So we've got a lot to do in this last 15 minutes here because this oh. is... A Angel Dahl's gone off. I can't see who's come on, actually. Angel um, Dahl. Rubenson's yeah. come on to Sweden. So, we have France, our group. So France, Sweden, yeah. Ireland. So, uh, <laughs> it might happen that we finish third and, and have to go through these uh, uh, 
Knockout. I think uh, I, I think we'll beat France. I think we'll beat France certainly at home. We can get a draw away. This, this, I think Sweden, obviously Sweden are the best, the next best team in our group after us, aren't they? It should be between us and Sweden to win it, you'd imagine. But I don't know. France, it's it's strong. Sweden coming forward again. Stina inside the box. Who just took the ball off? Oh, was it Lotta again? Oh, what a surprise! <laughs> She took it off for all day long, apart from that one chance when she was clean through on goal. But, um, but yeah, now Loftus played well tonight for England again. Not well, we shouldn't be surprised because she's been doing this for Arsenal game after game all season, hasn't she? Let's be honest. Um, and I think what I noticed with with Lotta is when she played those two recent England games, her confidence has grown, hasn't it? You can see how much more confident she is now. You know, tonight mm. she's playing for England and she's like directing the defence. You know what I mean? She's like a leader of that team. And that's how much her confidence has grown just from the last few weeks. And it's just brilliant to see. Um, well done, Lotta, actually. Fantastic. Um, but anyway, that, that was some good questions here, actually. I enjoyed the, especially that last one. That was brilliant. That Thinking about all those great players that we had back in there. We've got some great players now, of course. I'm sure in years to come, people look back on this team that we've got now, that the yeah, 20, 24 Continental Cup champions and say what a great team it was. And they were a great team. They are a great team. And they're going to go on to some great things as well um, in in the future, I'm sure. Um, Terry says, I can't believe Suter Jen Beatty wasn't in that uh, team. Uh, uh, uh. What, would she have been at Arsenal? She probably would have been at Arsenal then as well, actually. Wouldn't she the first time around, 2014, 2015, around about that time, wouldn't she? I'm sure she would. Um, maybe not. She might have come after, actually, thinking about it. But anyway, yeah, she could have been in that. I'm sure she would have got in that team anyway. Jen Beatty at her best, I'm sure she would have done. Um, but anyway, she wasn't in it, Terry, so unlucky. Uh, never mind. Um, but anyway, that has been that has been a rather a, exciting show, hasn't it? Looking back on mainly on that Continental Cup final last weekend, which was fantastic. Uh, England are making two subs, actually. Uh, Danielle Carter's coming on with a runners-up medal from Sunday around her neck and Chloe Kelly as well, of course. Daniel, sure Carter? Daniel Carter? Daniel yeah, Carter? Uh, sorry, Jess Carter, not Daniel. Daniel yeah, Carter's on me break as we've mentioned it before. So I've been thinking of Daniel Carter. It's Jess Carter, of course, the uh, Chelsea loser that's coming on. Um, so, yeah, so anyway, um, Chloe Kelly's coming on as well. And Sweden are looking more dangerous. You've got to say, the second half, they play well, Sweden. And they're coming forward again. And England trying to get it out. Oh, we just managed to. Mary Oaks have got the ball. But Sweden have looked good in the second half. They've got some good players, haven't they? Look through their team. But they've got some very good players, haven't they, Sweden, in actual fact. But anyway, um, I'll take a draw at this moment in time, the way the game's gone. But maybe Chloe Kelly will come and win it again. She likes doing that at Wembley, don't she? She's got a, <laughs> she's got a few good goals at Wembley. Russo's going off for England. Alessia Russo is going off for Chloe Kelly. Uh, scored the goal, of course. Um, got a bit of an injury, but she seems OK. Um, so Russo's gone off and uh, Neve Charles has gone off for Jess Carter. So the two Chelsea losers have replaced each other. <laughs> Which is a shame. Actually, just on that, on that, actually, did you notice that, Andreas, that Chelsea changed captain halfway through the game on Sunday? Yeah, I, oh, yeah, I saw it. Copper, didn't they? Because Neve Charles was captain at the start, and then yeah. Aaron Cuthbert was captain in the second yeah, half. Now they asked Emma Hayes about it. I wasn't really listening to her after what she said about Jonas, but what was the reason for that that she gave for changing captains halfway through the game? No, I think uh, they, they are uh, switching from. From Neem Charles to Aaron Cuthbert from match to match, and she wanted uh, both uh, to be captain in in a cup final, and so uh, therefore she decided one half, and and the second half, and she changes. It's it's a strange decision. I think a captain should be captain for the whole yeah. match. I was. It's, it's, I, it took me a while to figure out. I'm thinking because I, I, I was saying to Paula, I'm sure Neve Charles was captain at the start. She led the yeah. team out, and then I'm. In the second half, I'm thinking Aaron Cuthbert's got the armband on and Neve Charles is still on the pitch. What on earth's happened there? I couldn't get my head around it. And then obviously yeah. they, they made that decision. Crazy. I've never seen that before, have you? No, no, I've never seen this before. And it looks like like a punishment for the for the one yeah. who's uh, in the first half. And then uh, yeah. you're taken off the armband because you didn't do it uh, good or, or something like that. But of course, if, if she said it before, to the team, yeah, and it may have been pre arranged, yeah, yeah. It's, I suppose it's, so. it's a strange decision in front of a cup final. Uh, you should say you are the captain in this match, yeah. So, yeah. if that if they'd won, would they have done like I mean, obviously, Leah Williamson and Kim Little went up together and lifted the cup together, didn't they? I'm assuming that's what they would have done if they'd won, I suppose. They'd have both would have lifted it together, wouldn't they? I guess, but 
I mean, I don't know why Leah Williamson was lifted it. She's not even captain. <laughs> She's vice captain. But anyway, um, there you go. But it doesn't matter. We won. I don't care who lifts it. You know, they should have let Stina lift it on her own because she, she won it for us pretty much on her own, didn't she? Um, anyway, Terry says, great Friday night entertainment uh, from Richard and Andreas Amar, plus all in the chat. Only downside so far tonight is the likes are low. Yeah, yeah. but don't forget, though, Terry, the, the Lionesses are playing tonight. So I think a lot of people are going to watch this, this show back. <laughs> After the game, maybe watch it tomorrow or something like that. So I think the likes will go up then. Steena's just lost her boot, actually. A lot of Uber Moyes just booted her. Don't do that, Lotta. Don't, don't be injuring Steena. What's the matter with her? God, so... <laughs> She's been watching Emma Hayes too much, isn't she? That's what it is. Too much aggression. That's what it is from Lotta there. Um, yeah, aggression. I bet, they, I, bet they have a, I bet they'll have a drink in the bar together afterwards, haven't they? Because they've had quite a battle. Lotter and, and Steena tonight, actually. It's been one of the highlights <laughs> of the game. Um, but anyway, there's 10 minutes left. It's still 1-1 England against Sweden. Um, anyway, thank you guys for, for watching tonight. I've enjoyed looking back on last weekend. It was great. And, and looking forward to some more great times to come as well in the next um, few seasons, watching this great team. And this season as well, hopefully, before, before the season's out. Because we don't have a game until um, next Sunday against Bristol City, of course. That's right. Um and the men play Aston Villa just before, so it's like a four-hour marathon of games for Arsenal, which is nice, isn't it? On the next Sunday evening, um, so we'll be back, of course, next Friday. We'll be looking forward, to looking ahead to the Bristol City game. We'll look back on this international break as well. I'm sure there'll be one or two. And hopefully, we we'll have some more news on Frida, um, positive news, hopefully as well to to bring you next Friday as well. So, um, so join us for that. Of course, I'll be back tomorrow for the uh, the men's game against Brighton. Another big game. Can Arsenal get the three points? The difficult place to go, Brighton is. It's going to be a tough game, but so let's see what we can do there. Um, so that's our five kickoff. I'll be at quarter past five for that one. So join me for that if you can. That'd be great to see you. Um, and hopefully, I'll say it'll be another big Arsenal victory. It'd be nice. Uh, Greg says, great show, great company. And yourself, mate, thank you very much for, for joining us again. Hopefully, see you tomorrow. Uh, for the men's game. Andreas, great to see you back in, in Germany again. We, we met in Wolverhampton briefly. We couldn't get much time, unfortunately, because you had to get your coach back. Um, yeah. But um, good to see you. Enjoyed the show. Yeah, of course. It was a great show and uh, talking about this this fantastic match and winning a trophy was great. And uh, yeah, and thanks for letting me uh, put the two questions. Uh, funny for great. me. That was great, actually. I enjoyed them. Yeah. I enjoyed the show and yeah. Thanks. We'll see. Well, we'll see you next week, I'm sure. Um, and oh no, you'll be, you are you flying over to London again next week? Uh, I'm flying on Saturday, but next Friday my aunt uh, is celebrating her 85th birthday, so I can't. Oh, uh, oh, oh, what's, what's, her her what's her name? What's her name? What's her name? Oh, it's a German name, Ushi. <laughs> oh, Ushi. Well, happy. Well, we we wish we wish her happy birthday anyway. Sorry. Yeah. I'll give her. <laughs> Uh, what time did you get back to London, by the way, on Sunday? What time did you get back to London? Um, on Saturday evening, the very Sunday, late Sunday. Friday, Saturday Sunday, evening. Sunday. After the game? Uh, so, um, after the game. No, I'm returning very early on Monday. No, Saturday, I mean, no, the final, the final last week, what time did the awesome. coach get back after the game? What time did the coach get back to the Emirates? Uh, well, for the Conte Cup final. Yeah, what well, uh, time did it come back? Uh, I think like half past ten or something. Yeah, after after ten uh, p.m. Yeah, yeah. And then so, you had to get the flight the flowing back. Well, that must have been a long, no, long day. Wasn't uh, it? it stopped. It stopped directly in front uh, of the cannons, uh, in front of the the armory store, and then uh, we went to Holloway Road. Fortunately, the tube <laughs> was running there because uh, Arsenal tube station uh, was closed the whole day. <laughs> oh. uh, yeah, they had not enough employees uh, to run it so it was close right. the whole day but fortunately Holloway right. was the road was and then open. you had to fly back to Germany the following morning isn't it yes yes of course well, that was tiring oh, <laughs> but it was <laughs> oh it must have been worth it definitely yeah I had four uh, I had a four hour drive after on Monday so that was oh yeah right. you said the night yeah yeah that's fine yeah yeah no I know yeah so. well we, we we went Friday came back Monday it was good actually we I mean, Wolf Ramps is not good. Not good. Really good. Good. Really good time. Yeah. But, um, it's annoying, we, that, we, it's yeah. annoying that the Ireland against England game clashes with Arsenal against Bayern on Tuesday again, again. But I'm going to have to just choose which one I want to watch again. So, yeah, anyway. Well, it's yeah, it's Champions League, though, isn't it? And England will beat Ireland about 5 0. So I'll probably oh, end up well, watching no. the Arsenal. 
But again, we'll probably have the England game on in the background as well and watch a bit of that as as you do. Um, but yeah, no, they, they don't care about women's football enough yet, do they, to schedule the games differently. Uh, yeah. But anyway, it is what it is. We have to go on with it and uh, do the best that we can to watch as much as we can of it all. But there you go. Um, anyway, we're, I'm going to go and watch the last few minutes of this game. It looks like it's going to finish in a draw. Five minutes to go. It is still 1-1. And Steena's worked hard. She played 120 odd minutes the other day. She's going to play a full 90 minutes tonight by the look of it. Uh, well, they're making two more subs now, so maybe she'll go off. I'm not sure. Rolfo's gone off anyway, the goal scorer for Sweden. Um, and Janogi's going on. And yeah, Steena has come off actually. Steena's come off uh, with five minutes to go. And Amber Guard's come on. Of course, she's played at WSL, didn't she, Amber Guard? Was it Everton she played for? I think it was, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, Anyway, so uh, thanks obviously to Andreas. Uh, thanks to Amar. Brilliant stuff as always. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, thanks to all you guys for watching. If you're watching it back, obviously, because you're watching England game, don't forget to give us a like as well. Um, Terry says, can't shut the station because we beat Salty FC in a cup final when he felt so <laughs> Maybe, yeah. Or maybe he's just shut everything down in London because that's what he's done anyway. It's just his job, really, is to shut everything down, isn't it? And make London um, just a terrible place to, to be. But anyway, um, there you go. So, yeah, thank you all you guys for watching. I'll be back tomorrow, of course, for the game at quarter past five. So join me for that. Next um, Friday, we'll, of course, be here for another women's show looking into the Bristol City game. Uh, Andrew, I'll have to send us some videos, I think, for that one. And if you can't be here, uh, just looking forward to Bristol City game. So we'll still have a show going. That'd be good. Uh, of course, next weekend, uh, next Sunday. So it's a double header. Arsenal men are against Aston Villa and then the women play um, Bristol City. So it's going to be a busy day next Sunday, isn't it? But lots to look forward to on the channel. And of course, um, we've got one trophy. The women have got one trophy. Are the men going to add another trophy to that list by the end of the season? You never know. They might do. That would be good, wouldn't it? Um, let's wait and see. Um, so, yeah, thank you for watching tonight. Um, good to see you all. Terry says, thanks for your okay, and I'll be back indeed. Um, so, yeah, I'll see you uh, tomorrow for the Brighton game. It's going to be good. Thanks for watching. We are Continental Cup champions again. It's great. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a great feeling. We've enjoyed the last week singing North London forever uh, in our <laughs> sleep, I'm sure. And uh, we'll be doing it again a few more times by the end of the season, I'm sure. Um, so, yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Thanks to Andreas, of course. Thanks to Amar. Thanks to you guys as well. And I will see you tomorrow. Come on, you gunners. Come yeah. on, you gunners. Let's win. The winning trophies is nice. Let's win some more. It's good. It's nice, isn't it? It's good fun. So let's win some more. Uh, see you tomorrow, guys. Take it easy. Thanks for watching. <laughs>